Captain's log, stardate 544-48.7. It's been about a week since our rendezvous, the Kismet rendezvoused with the USS Salamander to escort her to the Shacklin Expanse, along with her cargo hold of Calc the crystals going to Calcet 2. <laughs> Unfortunately, I was out of action during most of that. And it appears that during my time out, a lot has happened. Even a week on, I'm still unsure of many of the details, and I'm still trying to come to grips with a lot of it. One thing, however, has become clear to me. Something I consider very important has found its way on board my ship. Something that I've hoped to see again. In the meantime, we have other matters. A respected Betazoid, uh, Betazoid Lord has come aboard the USS Tian An Min and is on their way to meet us somewhere between Lambda Hydra and the Hatoria systems. They're looking for my help to p broker a peace deal between the Romulans and the Klingons. This is quite an honor and is also a massive responsibility. With a Romulan Imperial Navy fleet positioned in the Tranom uh, Sar system and a Klingon Defense Force fleet in the Narendra system, the neutral corridor to the Shackleton Expanse is currently in jeopardy. If this goes wrong, we could be facing down a border war. Let's hope it doesn't come to that. End log. Well, that was good timing. <laughs> yeah, it was. We cut to the conference room aboard the Kismet, as you've been at movement for a while alongside the salamander oh yeah are we uh at a slower speed due to escorting a miranda uh, class uh unless you want to take the shackleton expanse to take a year you're you're tractoring them along and pulling them along inside your work bubble because miranda's cool. move way even the upgraded miranda's move way slower than luna's yeah like i think miranda max speed is like seven <laughs> With yeah. refits, seven. Yeah. With refits, oh, yeah. Uh, GM, could you remove that little gray blob over the Nova class? Because I've, I've, I think I have since had that, uh, had a new one put in. Sure. To get to a starbase, yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, senior staff is brought into conference. You're about, you're about maybe half hour or so, uh, before meeting with the uh, Tiana Min. So you have a bit of time to kind of sit down, get your thoughts together, and figure out what you're going to be doing for the next half of your journey. Because you've been out for, like, as, I, as the walk said, for a few days now. So you've had a bit of time to kind of get settled, and now you're having some thoughts to have. Uh, I forget, does everyone in this room know about the, um, the corpse on the ship, the elephant in the room, so to speak? Everyone except for Captain Kiddick. The other captain, yeah. Okay, so not going to mention it then. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> Classified information. Bogus. Please. Go ahead. Sorry. Well, what do you all think? About what? I need to get him where he's going. Otherwise, not good at all. Picking up the uh, picking up the Betazoid. Uh, you said a, it's a lord. Yeah, of uh, the Betazoid nobility. Uh. Oh shit! Uh, do we have a name? Uh, for the purposes of security, the name hasn't been divulged over subspace, but you do have... They did, there's appropriate uh, security codes to answer if they're the actual person you're looking for. Gotcha. Could I look into those codes? Um, give me insight security difficulty of three. Oh, no. 
Mm-hmm. I'm assuming that this ship that's coming to meet us is going to meet us while we're en route to Calcut. We don't need to stop or anything. Oh no! Uh, take there's a set. There's a there's a set of coordinates that you're meeting them. Like you're kind of meeting in in one of the uh, short of the battle, the contested area. Uh, oh, we're just taking this Miranda class with us. GM, take yeah. a threat. Sure. And I can prop my bold security. Uh, intelligence operative for a focus? Yes. I'll reroll one. I see. Yeah. Okay. See what's going on here. Uh, the security cards are in uh, co- in uh, compliance with Starfleet Command procedures for uh, a member of a Federation citizen that's been empowered with, who's been specially commissioned for uh, diplomatic or Im- otherwise important missions. Sort of thing that, it's a thing that was a lot more common in the TOS era, uh, but sometimes certain civilians have skills or influence or access that officers don't have, and Starfleet or will sometimes specially commission them to a ship and yeah, kind of keep them quiet. Happens a lot in the diplomatic service. Yeah. And pinches sometimes the Andorian Guard are sometimes commissioned. It's like, well, you're a general and you've trained all your life for ground combat. We'll let you take command of this ground infantry unit and because mm-hmm. you know this way more than anyone else here. You know glacier combat, for example. Yeah. We're making you or, go. <laughs> or they'll pull in someone from the Vulcan Science Academy yeah. to oversee a Starfleet dig. So it does. It does line up. Uh, it does seem that uh, from the security code, it looks like it was rushed in the sense that it seems Beta Z is in the midst of a uh, state of emergency. So they're kind of in a bit of a rush, and they gave who they could. They had other people they would have liked to have given when you look through it, but they're either sick or they're in quarantine. So oh. this is the. Oh. This is... Does it tell us? <laughs> do, would I be able to in the, like glean who it actually is though? Uh, no, uh, the security clearance is meant to hide that fact. You'd have to you'd have to talk to the appropriate admiral who had the information because you're not your security clearance doesn't seem to be ha- high enough. Yeah, I'm not talking to admirals at the moment. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> understandable. Hmm. He's not my Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking to admirals. But you get that in a sense that there's someone of vice admiral or higher that you would need to actually talk to and ask for that information like it's very hush hush who this person is which usually implies a federation council member or someone of a vip uh that federation's very worried about being caught uh they used to do this in a dominion war it hasn't been practiced a lot recently even with the archon incidents they weren't that careful with their vips well at least it checks out captain Oh, that's good. I wasn't too worried about the uh, Lord himself. Uh, what I'm more so concerned about is the possibility of a border skirmish between the Klingons and the Romulans. Indeed. Extrapolating from their current activity, a border conflict would be extremely likely if intervention is not suitably diffusive. So what are we going to do, send pens to the Klingons to yield them down and send myth to logic the Romulans down? Or ro- logic, not logic. I mean, that doesn't sound Smart like ass a, them. an awful plan with the Klingons. And currently, I'm neither the Romulans nor the Klingons' favorite person right now. It's no. Not- well, if you're, uh... If you don't want to, uh to talk to the Romulans or the Klingons, I'd be happy to stand in your What place. did you do to the Romulans? I what wish thing? I knew. Oops, I and I think we all know enough about the way Romulan politics to know that that is, uh, that is in itself a explanatory answer. Indeed. I've never known the captain to be a man to not want to talk to someone. Well, if he still doesn't want to talk to a Klingon, that obviously has threatened his life, but that's fine. I'll stand in his place. 
if he wants me to. No, no, I will be more than happy to participate in these diplomatic talks. It's well within my skill set. I'm just appreciative of the assistance is all. And to be fair, I, I very much doubt a Klingon's going to start threatening people when I'm stood next to him. <laughs> well, uh, they've they've uh, a briefing to say they're looking for Grenon specifically, the, the ship that's coming to meet us. Hmm. Mm hmm. Has there been any reason why uh, I've been specifically requested? I'm not a diplomat. I just know what's on the paper. Well, not the paper, the pad. I'm, I'm wholly aware that uh, I have a uh, known uh, record as a skilled diplomat. But well, considering my standing with both the Klingon Empire and the Romulan Empire, you'd think that they'd want another ship, like say, oh, the expedition to. Uh, handle something as large as this. This could be they're just not in the right sector of space. Yeah, or, is the... or they don't think it's going to end well and they want a ship with big guns in the way. Right. But they did request me specifically. I wonder what that's about. Perhaps the unpredictable nature of Romulan politics has changed. Hmm. Yes, Captain Grennan here. Bridge here. Uh, we've made contact with the TNI men. Uh, they've uh, moved, they're a little closer from the rendezvous point than we were expecting. They seem to be standing at uh, all stop. Uh, is it within acceptable parameters? Uh, it's a few thousand, a few hundred thousand kilometers closer than we were expecting, but it's within the the operational area. All right, we'll be right there. Uh, unless anyone else has anything pressing, uh, I think I can consider this senior staff meeting dismissed. Understood, I'll, sir. I'll talk to you later, Captain. I'll be returning to my ship now. Oh, very good. Uh, feel free to let my XO know if you need any assistance. He'll forward any such requests to me. Of course. Commander and... Pend and I will be working closely. Oh, joy. The captain sort of does a light bow before walking onto the bridge. <sighs> oh. Um, I might want to change how this looks. Yeah, uh, <laughs> speaking say, of, um, is yeah. Ether in a quarters or is she being put in the break by the captain? What? We never decided what we are doing with Adler last time, so, like, it's the captain's call and if she's in the brig, or she's got some quarters on the ship. Because I'm not gonna uh, make him talk if he doesn't have to. Because she was uh, technically here assisting us. And I'm gonna say, um, knowing what we know now, um, I'm just gonna, we're just gonna give her quarters because, let's be honest, the brig wouldn't hold her anyway. Mm-hmm. No, it would. I'm not there to turn off the force field and let her out this time. Womp womp. So yeah, people start looking over as you start taking your posts on the bridge. And we've got... Uh, we've got Wittergast. He is the con. Oh yeah, the opening sweet sequence last time of Joker getting out of the pressure. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> and as the captain... Carter uh, and I trying to fly the ship? Nope. Nope. As the, as the captain sits down in his seat, he looks over to Penn and he says... Uh, XO, uh, send a message down to, um, uh, to, uh, Mr. Bonsab, our diplomatic attaché. Let him know that his assistance might be required. 
Understood. I will. I'll work with him to set up the suites. Very good. Are we at a sufficient range to uh, <clears throat> uh, to put the vessel on screen? Uh, where you can come out of warp now, sir. All right. Bring us down. Aye, right, sir. Uh, yep, I have it. Uh, I'm going to double check the graphic real quick. Make sure I'm not leaving stuff I'm not supposed to leave there. Ship on sensors now. Ooh. Appears to be in a Kira class, sir. <clears throat> Interesting. They're really sending out the uh, the guns. Very well. Uh, hail them. Give me control engineering. Uh, difficulty of a number. Um, <laughs> what is it at the moment? That would be you, Varder. I thought it was my feathered cones. Yeah, okay. Oh boy. You might want to, <laughs> Varder, next time you get a, uh, a milestone that'll let you do it, you might want to move a point from command into engineering because we no longer have a dedicated engineer. Yeah, but my psychic stuff uses command. Oh, that's right. So I'm currently having uh, some points moving to engineering. I have finished engineering three right now. Uh, I, right. I have engineering two. I've and got, oh, I've and got Joker a has engineering three. Just, so uh, I don't have a focus. Oh yeah, what's the ship roll? Uh, communications plus engineering, right, and the it. difficulty is zero. That's flat. Good. I just want to make sure I was right on that. No, oh, great. So this is just momentum. Uh, Tian and Min, you can roll the same roll. In I'm nearly complicated. But two momentum was generated. We would have had to spend the two momentum just to. If I still had the mental complication rise. Mm -hmm. I would have complicated that, but it's gone thanks to the bone crystals. It's very fortunate. I'm not going to like this. Okay. One threat generated. Oh no! You have re both uh, the ship has recognized your hail. On screen. And on screen, I believe you met this person. I'm <laughs> fairly certain. On, on screen, you'll notice two things immediately. One, a face you know pretty well that you probably haven't seen since a trial six months ago, and the fact that the person is not in a Starfleet uniform. They are in what could best be described as uh, Beta Z uh, high fashion. Captain hmm. Brennan's jaw just drops and he stands up out of his seat and does a couple steps forward, and this is probably the, this is the moment where they cut away to commercial break in the show. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know why does it not wear clothes if they have the choice. I think that's just for weddings. Oh. That's just... Hopeful thinking on the, their part. No, I was thinking we're going, is that what their high fashion means? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? He's just speechless. 
If you would be so kind, Captain, I would like to invite you on board the Tinian Men. I have some things that we need to discuss about the border conflict. Uh, I, I un, under under understood. What? Yes, yes, I'll be right right over. And he just sort of makes a, a motion to, like, a very jagged motion to uh, Varda to cut, cut the comms, you know, just like the hand motion. <laughs> and he looks back to Penny and says, what the hell? Well, the codes um, they, they were correct. <laughs> well, never mind the codes. He's supposed to be in prison. And? Do you need me to run a check, sir? Hmm? Do you need me to run a check, sir, see if I can find what has happened to enable his presence? Uh, do I remember, like, what the, what the sentence was that was passed on him? Like, I know the verdict was, was guilty on on charges, but what was he sentenced to? Uh, last you heard, he was on penal duty on uh, New Zealand. Hey. Hey. Huh. Why not Australia? That makes a lot more sense. Do people actually live there, though? Um, sorry, hey. New Zealand. Sorry. <laughs> Come on. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What did Rip you say? Barter. <laughs> They didn't want it to be too thematically appropriate. Oh, uh, the, you are being hailed by the salamander. Oh, what other surprises are waiting for me today? On screen. Uh, Captain Kiddick's face appears before on your screen. Captain Grennan. I, yes. uh, couldn't, uh... I couldn't escape uh, noticing that uh, you've made contact. How yes. how is the situation? Is this our uh, is this a pickup or is it a an escort mission? Uh, as far as I know, it's it's a pickup, but um, there's been a complication of sorts. Uh, oh, I. I'm currently unsure how we're proceeding. I'm about to beam over uh, to the other vessel to confirm. Would you need assistance? Uh, the captain's meetings. Captain's meeting. I think this uh, this is something that I need to handle for myself personally. Ah, uh, I see. To say, uh, hmm, no. Well, if you need me, I'm just a transporter away. Don't hesitate. Oh, of course. <sighs> and he just lets out a breath. And, uh, you hold down the fort. Um, I'm heading over. Uh, I'm heading over to see our uh, lord. Uh, however, I will be making a quick stop at Med Bay on our way out. On my way out. Uh, Captain, I would suggest, with our previous knowledge of where he should be and what our current mission orders are, is to take someone with you. Maybe not into the meeting, but to have someone there. Right. Right, no, that's... That's about right. Uh, um, and he just sort of... Uh, he thinks it over for a second. He says, well, since I'm heading down there anyway, maybe I'll bring Eprix with me. Understood. 
and the captain is going to head down to sick bay. Uh, captain. Uh, yes. The... Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, due to special commission, he is in this position as opposed to running out his sentence and being returned to service in an official capacity within Starfleet permanently. It was kind of a temporary, we need someone to throw in the fire measure. Huh. Wonder how he swung that. Anyhow. Uh, I'll keep everyone here updated as soon as I learn more. Commander Pend, you have the con. Captain? Yes? No, that was confirmation. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Oops. So now, finally, the captain is going to head down to sick bay. As Captain Grennan disappears away, anything else the bridge staff do? We spin out. Um, Lieutenant Myth, could you give me a, a scan on the Tian and Men? Yes, sir. Anything specific you wish me to scan for? Anything out of the usual for an Akira? Considering where we're about to go, I don't want any surprises. Understood. Uh... Reason science, difficulty one, assisted by the ship's sensor science. How much momentum are we going to get? Uh, difficulty zero. Because of high resolution. Yep. So that's three. Wait, well, I resolution. rolled command instead of science. Uh, uh, wouldn't have mattered for either rolls, though. So we're full on. That's four, yeah. Yeah, so we're falling two, two and two overflow. Yeah. Do, do, do. Well, <laughs> I will do. Oh, I'll do it this way. Actually, I know what to do. Uh, hold on a second. Just make sure there's something. Sure, I noted everything correctly. I did. Cool. Um, couldn't remember. Uh, Myth in roll twenty. Go into the uh, Kismet GM resources, and then go into the NPC list, and you should see the ships. Uh, the ship there. And Varder, I would like you to give me a an opposed inside security uh, versus uh, some of, some of the people who've been looking at, out for Pend. Uh, it's one of those things that he, uh, that since you got the warning that he might be in trouble, you've kind of had to check over your logs to make sure everything's fine, that there's no yeah. chance of them doing anything. This is you. This is just us checking in with that because that's something I kind of forgot to do last time. Yeah. So I should probably do it now because uh, it, it might be relevant. Well, it said I'm okay, it, so. I kind of want bold security because that's always going to help, especially in a roller that doesn't focus. Well, I mean, we've also got so the that's two a... floating as well if you want to spend them as well. Uh, uh, doesn't that go for the next. Uh, yeah. It goes oh, if I've got the two. Yeah. Those two float have to go into uh, into the roll that generated them. Yeah. So I'm not detecting anything out of the ordinary for a Akira class starship. However, I might buy one with thread, buy one with two momentum to roll four. Uh, one, two. I don't think I have a focus that applies because I don't feel like this is guerrilla warfare. It's more like information. Um, 
Lieutenant Miff, could you give me an update on their crew complement? Yes, sir. So I'll spend a momentum for that. Or the two uh, yeah, no. No focus, four dice. Okay. Uh, for a cure class? Jeez. Mm. Well, basically, not, not how many they've got, but basically is what they have what they have re put down officially. Uh, uh, and actually, Myth, you have, since you're a science officer, you can get that for free. Um, because it's part of oh, your... Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, does, it does line up with what the TNMN should have. There do not appear to be any anomalies in their crew based oh on... Oh my the god! Wow. wow! I think someone's actually wow. in their determination. No, oh. no, they, let that stand. That's amazing. That's an amazing roll. What just happened? A Three terrible. 19s and a 20. Oh my out of, god. Out of five dice. This person spends toward the value. I will not allow failure. No, allow failure, please. This is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is so garbage. There we go. That's a little more it's not as. That's not as shit. Yeah. Good grief. <laughs> I'm wondering if I've matched them now. Yada yada. They didn't reroll a 13, so then that's. Yeah. Okay, so we're even. <laughs> I'm assuming that I really didn't have a focus, because the only two I could see as potentially applying are guerrilla oh. warfare or on to tactical systems, and those are a real stretch. Uh, yeah, no. Yeah, I didn't think so. Otherwise, all no. of those would have been crits. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, too. <laughs> wow. That is, uh, There's that's rough. Place. Yeah. Well, I, I don't have many or any focuses for intelligence yet. Yeah. Which makes sense. He wasn't intelligence-based. So. Yeah. Uh, it would seem everything is in order. As with as much information as Penn's given you, the some of the drills you've done. Uh, as it stands, unless you determine and re-roll something or somehow get more numbers there, uh, this is going to seed for them. The only way I can do that would be to crit. Yeah. Eh. Eh. I. Yeah, no, that, that's not something I can manage. Unless I spend, like, another five determination, and I'm not feeling like that today. <laughs> uh, so, Captain Grennan, uh music changes because you're in a new place. Because you're going to the Med Bay. Where familiar faces know your name because you're here so often. I think a nurse, uh, when uh, when Grennan comes in, says, shoulder again? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that nurse is then promptly fired from set and Luke isn't is still allowed out. anymore. Hmm? We didn't and pay so them for them to out. have a line. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> what? Nothing. What did I miss? Yeah, no, poor Ensign Luke. Oh, he died? No. No, he's, he's just still in sick bay. He's in long term care. Yeah. Oh. He got thrown down a ladder in a Jeffrey's tube. Okay. Yeah, I think like his spine was damaged or something. Oh. His wow. neck. Hey, it's not the first time I've done spinal surgery in this med bay. It was that and his neck. Mm hmm. Oof. To be fair. Rough. And I think he was also stunned, but I can't be sure. So you probably find Efrix probably working on Luke because it's been like two weeks and this guy is still bedridden and, and, and stuck to, to a bio bed. Is he, has he been conscious at all or? Oh, yeah, he just can't get up. And the captain's going to walk over say, doctor. Captain. Ah, hello, Ensign. Uh, sorry for not getting up, sir. Don't worry about it. Just focus all your energy on getting better. That's an order. Sir. 
I hope you don't mind. Uh, have to borrow your uh, doctor for a moment. Uh, you would, doctor? Oh, don't let me stop you. He weakly moves his hand, but doesn't get very far with it. She pats his hand a little bit. No. Oh. And then follows. How are things in, uh, and he just sort of, he motions his head over to, uh, the quarantine. It's a good question. <laughs> I see. Um, good talk. Um, <laughs> I know, I'm just... <laughs> Do I, now, there's probably hasn't been any change, has there? Um, give me insight medicine difficulty two. Feel free to spend a momentum. Or give threat, you know. Captain's not the boss of you. I mean, he yeah, is, but you know I what I mean. I don't have bold medicine, that's not what I Um, do, do you know biology? Yeah. Love, I'd love I'd love at some point to just someone say to Penn, well, who died and put you in charge? Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, yeah. no. We, ne we need that conversation with Varro. Can, can we have Varro say it? It would be great. <laughs> Varro, <laughs> no, he's way too measured for that. Varro problem. would never say that. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking Vulcans. So good. Yeah. So good. Hey, you get two momentum out of that. Um, uh, let me just type that up for you real quick as you look it up on your computer because you have been observing it for the last week and the, the readings are... You have to look over notes of like three different specialists that you have under your staff plus your own mm -hmm. notes. Give me one second, Captain. Let me pull up all the details. Mm hmm. Well, the good news is that his health seems to be improving. Oh? Um, the closer we get to Cockett, to the better he seems to be. Now, that could just be time, but given his interaction with the crystals, it may be more than that. Of course. He still has not regained consciousness at this point. Well, if he had, I'd be a bit surprised, and he crosses his arms, he says, I would have probably been informed by now, wouldn't I? Certainly. Uh, any attempts that we've made to overcome his coma medically have failed at this point. Well... I think it's probably for the best that we don't try and force it. Of course not. Uh, of course I'll be awaiting any uh, any changes. Uh, but that's not the only reason I've come down here. Oh. How can um, you captain? Uh... I have learned the identity of the Betazoid Lord who we are uh, to work with on this upcoming mission. Uh, I've spoken with him over communications, and I'm about to go over to 
uh, their sh uh, to his ship in order to uh, meet with him in person. It's someone who uh, both of us are familiar with. A former, uh, former captain, Roland Starks. Eyebrows in hairline, well, as close as they can get. She's no clue. As things stand, uh, it would appear that in uh, uh, in preparation for this diplomatic meeting. Roland Starks has been granted a uh, <clears throat> temporary civilian service uh, to perform di diplomatic duties in his capacity as a Betazoid noble. That's consistent with their... But as I said, uh, I'm going over to uh, the vessel, and I wanted to bring you along. Of course, Captain. Although I'm not 100% sure what, uh, what help I'll be. I just want... Uh, I suppose you could say an extra opinion. I know your area of expertise isn't exactly psychology, but Uh, I still felt that uh, you'd be best for the, uh, for the job. Uh, Pend is going to be busy enough uh, handling things with the salamander and current stations keeping. Well, uh, if uh, at all possible, just uh, gather anything you need and meet me in the transporter room. Of course. I'll let you finish up your business here, assign whatever uh, secondary staff you need. Are we and, really uh, hearing that, or is that just the ambient? Yeah, you're, you're hearing that. Okay. Captain... Do you hear that? Did I hear that? Oh, yeah. What the hell was that? I had my ambient noise turned way down. Sorry. It's okay. Uh, I've been slowly moving the volume up, so. And the captain looks out of the, uh, he looks out of the, um, doctor's office and at the table. Something from the quarantine area? Oh no. You notice no one else in mid is reacting to the noise. It's just you two. Well, that makes sense. Captain's going to walk over. Is opaque. It's true. It's yeah, okay. you will have to walk through. Yeah, I am in, technically. Okay, you it's step in. Me. You step in. <laughs> you just walk into the quarantine field. Ah! <laughs> Are you supposed to make that noise every time you go in? No. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, you notice that... Um, there's a constant whisper in the back of your head. Are we able to make out any words? Oh, this is where it gets fun. Uh, give me insight plus command difficulty five. 
Oh. Oh. I, I can possibly make this roll. I would suggest I that can. you, uh, one's the main roller, one's assist. You can both individually try it, but uh, I failure will, has I consequences. I the main roller on this with an insight command of 16. Okay. Because I was gonna, I was gonna tap I'm a doctor. Uh, but... Yeah, you need a you need a one. But that only puts me at fifteen. And and you need a one in the uh in the relevant uh discipline in order to use it. You do? I think you do. Uh it's it's a... in, in what order you, to what do you mean? I have a three in command. Right, no, I'm saying in order to use I'm I'm a doctor, not a blank. Um whatever mm. discipline Whatever discipline you have it apply to has to be a one. I don't remember that, but maybe. Because like that's that's the trade off is that you're you're using it to make your worst stat your like best stat. Oops, I well then I can't use it on anything anymore. That me. may be that may be a character creation thing. There's some restrictions like that that only apply at character creation. Uh, I will. I mean, I know it's we've not, never had that up seconds. before. I mean, it doesn't really matter this sure present but... second. Yeah, yeah, I'll look it up. I have the book. Yep. Yeah, feel free to look it up. Anyhow, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to spend my determination. I think uh, if I can find something that works. And not the six momentum we have. Uh, oh. do, you, do you guys want me to spend three momentum? Spend what you like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll spend three. Like, you know, I won't spend the determination. I'll spend three momentum. You can spend five, five if you want. <laughs> spend five. Well, I want to leave. Us, I want to leave us with some. Then pass the roll of flying colors. Uh, I still will want Ephrix to roll. Uh, in, insight command as an assist. And I have a re-roll with my uh, cautious command. Uh, just, just out of the off chance that maybe it works. Does a does a non-carbon based life forms work? Uh, uh, at complication, oddly. Eh, I wouldn't do it. What is what is your score in it? Thirteen. Eh, you've got command three, so honestly, that might be worthwhile to bump up the complication a little bit. Up to you. We do not have enough. We do have enough momentum for me to kill it if I yeah it. yeah let's do it hey. yes nice we got a momentum and we succeeded The GM. Oh no, now I actually have to tell them what it is. Uh huh. <laughs> oh no. Playing this music now. Oh, it's been going. I don't like that. Those are four very bad words. We're in danger. What? We're in danger. Oh, good. Perhaps we should bring more than just us. 
for the other ship. Agreed. Considering the nature of our, uh, uh, considering the nature of our friend, the captain looks over his shoulder. What? What are you doing? She kind of looks around confused, looks in the direction of the opaque, as far as she's concerned, opaque force field. She looks back at her screen and taps at it some more. Bring down the force field. Bring it down. Japs is going to step out. I assume the doctor does as well. Mm-hmm. He's gonna put the field back up. What are you doing? Look over my medical files. Tap, tap, tap. Is, is that what is, is that what she is doing? Yeah, you look over. You walk over to look at what she's doing. Oh wait, that's right. She's a psychic. She can make me see whatever the hell I want to see. Doesn't even matter. Uh, you look over. It, it does appear to be that's what she's doing. She's looking over the, some of the preliminary scans, the medical. St- Make sure she's healthy. She's bringing a disease aboard ship or something. Uh, is there anything else we can help you with? Um, I don't know. I just got this funny feeling. I thought I was ill, but something's off. It's hard to explain. He Something just sort of else? puts a hand to his chin. Can I roll insight on that? Because uh, insight command difficulty one. Yeah, I'll spend a. I will spend a momentum just in just in case, so I can re-roll a complication if it comes up. Sure. Didn't okay. matter. Two momentum. Uh, yeah, two momentum. Huh. Well, currently I have a somewhat uneasy feeling about quite a few things that are going on. Uh, if... Well, you tend to. You need to worry less. <laughs> you are the last person I want to be hearing that from, you know. I'm the first person who's told you that. Incorrect. Sorry, second. You're right. Ah, great. You should really listen to the women in your life. We know more than you. For different reasons. (laughs) (laughs) So true. Oh, get right. Yeah, and I suppose myth knows more than I do on a uh, intellectual level. So, fair point. Um, anyhow, uh, just please do let me know if anything else comes up. Uh, believe you me when I say we're going to take it seriously. I'll be sure to let you know. Right now, it's without the crystals anymore. It's... My powers are a lot more vague, which, comforting, uh, in a comforting sense, is more in line with natural sonics. So, plus sign there, I suppose. But it's like controlling the energy of a phaser with your bare hands, if such a thing were possible. Well, don't forget, you're... I might not know exactly what you're going through, but there is someone on this ship who does. She blinks. <laughs> oh, there's another human who's realized Sonics and is one of the first natural-born uh, uh, psychics that hasn't gone completely insane. Uh, not human, per se, but... Well, that's a Betazoid in there, and uh, he ain't getting up. Not anytime soon, anyway. The captain blinks anyway. 
she was on board with him. She knew mm-hmm. Captain. She was on the ship with him. And oh, she was. Her yes. Bodies, so she knows. Captain. I'm the reason your commander isn't dead. You're right, welcome. Right. No, and I appreciate that. Um, I don't know if you do, but thanks for the sentiment. No, no. Um, oh, no. I know exactly who. Um, remember you uh, uh, You controlled his mind and had him try and beat us up. You're going to need to narrow that down. <laughs> right. Um, Bajoran? Because she did that to Tashabon, too. <laughs> Keep going. You have a few Bajorans aboard this ship, and there was someone at that station. Yeah. The one on the bridge. Oh! Barter. Yes. Um, his experience is, in connection, is different than mine. Um, to simplify for you, in a way you can understand, one navigates by sail, one navigates by paddle. Uh, we both are crossing the same ocean, but we're doing it in very different methods. Which is which? And that is why it is an oversimplification. Uh-huh. Anyhow, uh, he's probably the only conscious person on the ship who you could probably talk about this with. Somehow I don't think your security chief is going to take extra time to be alone with me. Uh, somehow I think that would endanger his uh, confidence in himself. <laughs> and the captain crosses his arms and he just says, Oh, who wouldn't want to be alone with you? Quite a few people. I'm quite deadly. Or I was, anyway. Efric's just, like, face palms. <laughs> great. Great to see where... Captain, that... sometimes you... You are very good at talking, but sometimes I don't think you realize what you're saying. <clears throat> oh, no. She smiles. Uh, anyhow, if there's nothing else, uh, the doctor and I have some rather pressing uh, business to get to. But it, again, if anything comes up, <laughs> feel free to reach out to Varder, and not in the psychic capacity, in the chief of security capacity. What's the difference? Ah, fair enough. Okay. Um... You know what I mean. I'm sure you know what you mean. Uh, doctor, uh, could I have some sort of uh, anal- a mild analgesic? To I have a slight headache that I'm trying to deal with. I don't want anything too strong because I don't want to accidentally subdue any psychic impression I'm getting. But it is somewhat painful. Well, can I run a scan on her and just make sure that there's not like any... I don't know, random crystals growing in her brain suddenly or something? Uh, reason medicine difficulty of two. Take a momentum. Uh, move the complication back down, I would guess. Um, xenobiology, non-carbon based no. life forms. Uh, yeah, I'll take immunology. xenobiology. Uh, spend gain some momentum there um it seems that she uh, the scan reveals that she seems to be experiencing some sort of psychic event um uh, almost like a mild form of uh, mind meld or what might be perceived as uh in medical terms as precognition mm-hmm. she's thinking about something that hasn't happened yet and she's trying to make sense of what she's having um it's not (laughs) for a human that's weird that it's extremely weird most humans aren't psychic there's like one in a billion have any sonic potential at all and she's full-on empathic telepathic and all these other weird things so uh, but like for someone that's budding psionic abilities it's 
not bad as usual. If she, if, she, if this was a Vulcan or a Betazoid or a, a Delton, this would be perfect. This would make total sense. Um, but since it's in a human uh, with no other genetic splicing, uh, this is kind of odd. But her health isn't endangered so far. As long as it doesn't get worse. Would um, giving her something for the pain uh, cause interference? As uh, It depends on how strong. If you give her like what amounts to over-the-counter type pain relievers uh it won't do any it won't it'll it won't affect it but if you give her something you could intentionally block her if you were trying to be sneaky about it but no i don't yeah. think i want to do that no i was more worried about like bringing down whatever shield she has and causing damage that way no, um, no. you'd have to give her like a real hard shot of a uh, painkiller to kind of mess with that but then again okay. if you give a hard shot to most people with painkillers that messes with what they're doing <laughs> it's true oh yeah Keep us updated. If it gets worse, I worry. That's my thought as well. Uh, Actually, do you mind if I borrow one of your neurocortical monitors? I kind of want to keep track of my status. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, uh, that's kind of me, the player's first response. Um... (laughs) Do we still have um, security stationed outside of the force field? Uh, unless you told them not to, they'd probably still be there. Okay. You know, I'd rather that equipment stay here, but you're welcome to remain as long as it's out of the way. Um, I don't think it's very wise for myself and that one to be in the same room for too long. That is a fair point. Although I'm not sure who's more in danger in that event, which that is not a comforting thought to me at all. Mm-hmm. Do I believe that she just wants the equipment to keep an eye on herself? Uh, inside command, she's, difficulty one. She's a cyanide and she can do whatever the hell she wants. <laughs> um... Nope, don't have canceling anymore, so that's all we we'll get. Uh... Hey. Oh, uh, you have one float. Um, yeah, it seems she genuinely is. She she has the look of someone who, like, she's asking it in the same way one of your nurses would, because a neuro and you know off the top of your head that a neurocortical monitor. It can't really do anything on its own. It's just a sensor that you that has. Yeah, like, I just didn't want her it. like scanning other people's brains. I'm, I don't know what she could do with that information. Yeah, um, like. but she doesn't. It, it does seem to be. It, it seems to be genuine what she's asking. Okay. Apparently, the uh, danger for him. Um. Very well. Uh, give her like mild. But, uh, I'll use it. I'll use it for pain. And, uh, if you can just sign these papers so we know where the equipment went. Sure. And she, she'll press her thumb to the pad to sign off on it. Is there anything else I can help you with, Miss Apple? Not at the moment. There's many questions I'd have, but uh, you have your duties and he needs your help. Or he will. Or he does? He does. Yes. She, you actually see her when she gets the uh, monitor, she immediately sticks it to her neck and starts tapping at it to set it in place. Keep us updated. Certainly, Doctor. Captain. Adler. Oh, please. Miss Adler. 
She steps out, <laughs> chuckling to herself. <laughs> God. <sighs> Anyhow. Was that what it's done? Hmm. I believe we should make our way to the transporter room. And Captain taps his comm badge. Captain Grun into bridge. Bridge hit. Uh, the doctor and I will be making our way to the transporter room now. Uh, we will uh, keep you posted as we go. Captain, where are we going to take... Hmm? An escort with us, given certain information. Mm. Yes. Uh, please send uh, Mr. Varder down to the transporter room as well. We will need his assistance. Understood. Time to press buttons and call the replacement to the bridge. <laughs> And go down. So, just checking something. Did I leave anyone in there? I did not. So, we will cut to the transporter room. Yay! Gridden, Efrix, and who else is coming down? Barter. Barter. Oh, that explains so much. So, Varda, you step in and see Efrix and uh, Grenin wa awaiting you. Another small nod towards them thing. Is there anyone on the console, anyway, for transporting? Uh, depends who you guys are activating, because I imagine you want someone to qualify to beam you over. Yeah. Probably a good idea. It would probably be Vata due to how the transporters focus. Oh, yes. Vata. This person. That's the current chief of engineering. Yeah. Actually, she was our original chief of engineering. She's yeah, she keeps she keeps re-becoming our chief. And she was still the chief engineer when, I, when Aaron served on board. Yeah. You guys did never make him the chief engineer. Yeah, it's true. He was just the yeah. liaison. Yeah, she sort of did the, uh, she, she sort of did the Dr. Crusher thing where she took a leave for a while to pursue another project and then she came back. It was this thing where it's, it's this character that keeps being, okay, we'll move them off as soon as, as soon as the character advances to being like a full lieutenant. And then it just keeps not happening when we have an engineer. Yeah. Through whatever story and player right, stuff. So who's rolling it's for our exactly uh, engineer? You're... Maybe get a run to do it so he has something to do. Yeah. <laughs> Fine. And we all get beamed into space. Hmm. Let me pull out the what was the role? I'll give her a new talent. Uh, control engineering. Um, although you do have a slight problem before you beam over. Um, your ships are currently... Uh, if I can pull you over to that map. We, we can get oh, close. Too far away, right, yeah. Yeah. Uh, is Redim's hit fine? Not Redim Farter. Shit. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so is the Kismet going to move into the transporter range of the TN I'm in? Yeah, I'll, I'll do a quick roll for wear gas. Yeah, control con. Difficulty zero. Engines con to assist. Uh, 
Do you tell a salamander what you're doing, or do you just kind of leave without them? I thought we had them tractors, so we're just dragging their dumb ass along. Well, you tractor them when you're at warp, but when you drop out of warp for tactical purposes, you let go so they can maneuver. I mean, could we leaving use... someone tractor for long term is not the smartest move. Could we use all the excess we got out of that just to give them the flight plan, plan to come along? You can, yeah. <laughs> it makes it a bit simpler. And actually, Salamander, is it safe to assume you would just stay in, in close with the Kismet, or would you hang back a bit? Staying close is good, uh, especially if we put the Kismet between us and the big fucking guns, if, if things go <laughs> sideways. That's fair. <laughs> because we're carrying a, l a little bit more precious cargo. You're carrying something more powerful than a couple of weeks. Yeah. Uh, so you do move to range. Just wanted to clarify position. Just so I was like, ah, oh, you are you were at pretty far away from each other when we were about to do this. Wanted to make sure. <laughs> Control engineering for transport. Uh yes. Um, Sensors engineering for the ship. Yes. So difficulty yeah. down by one. And I assume the TNM in is uh, offering to let them beam to one of their pads. Yes. Yeah. So it's difficulty. Uh, actually, it's down to it's just two. Hmm. Oh, and don't forget uh, it because it uses sensors. Sorry, down to one. Yep. Or two floating. Good for Vata that she's good at her job. Yeah, I don't know what we're going to do with two floating on the transporter roll. Technically, uh, that's free her? floating, but you know, same for shit. Uh, I'm going to give her I know my ship as a talent. As the new thing. Oh, question, DM. Considering mm -hmm. we have free floating, could we spend those free to destroy one of your threat? No. So if we go. Could use it to uh, make the um, uh, to make the beam back easier. Uh, yeah. 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 That makes sense to me. So it is a so you guys are just beaming as is, no extra gear or anything like that, uh, presumably. I mean, there should be no need, anything right? It's a starship. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a. Uh, I always like I mean, to ask. It's, it's a Federation vessel. I don't need to take a rifle. Um, that's like a weapon thing I'm bringing aside from a transport enhancer, which is also a Federation vessel. Why would we need one of those? That event. Presumably they have a better med bay than I do, so. Oh, I like the silence even less than I like the noise. Mm. Um, we cut briefly over to the salamander as it's falling along. And just so I have an idea where everyone is. There's you. You guys are going over here. It's like the most complicated Venn diagram I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> and I almost gave Varder twice. <laughs> there we go. Well, two we can have two Varders. That'll be fine. The USS Kismet is the perfect uh, middle ground between the Salamander and Tiananmen. <laughs> That might actually be true. It actually is kind of. Yeah, it kind of is. Except uh, neither of them are faster than the Kismet. Yeah. 
Captain Kiddick, uh, you're aboard the Salamander. You've kind of pulled alongside the Kismet. So they gave you flight plans, and they've uh, notified you of the intent of beaming over a small detachment over to the uh, TNM in. Um, at moment, everyone's at green alert. All systems normal. But you wish to hail the Akira? Yes. Uh, TNM in, you are being hailed by the Salamander. This is Ensign Gray aboard the TNN. Good afternoon. This is uh, Captain Kiddick of uh, the Salamander. I um, was uh, notified that uh, the Kismet is sending over an, uh, a detachment to uh, to your ship, and I was wondering if it if the meeting is communal or strictly uh, invitational. It's the um, the captain is asking only for Grinnan at this point. Uh, it's more of a consultation than anything long term, as far as he has told us. So only his presence is required. Hmm. Well then. Unless slightly rude, but I'll I'll take it. Do you wish me to pass Salamander along a out. message, sir? Salamander cuts communication. <laughs> <laughs> what did I miss? The equivalent of going rude and hanging up. <laughs> uh -huh. uh... Lord Starx, as you're moving uh, down to the transporter room, a one of the command staff aboard the ship kind of holds out a pad to you to inform you of communication from the Salamander to uh, to the Tiena Min. Just so you're in the loop of what happened at the bridge. I look over. Were we past any information on Captain Kiddick? Uh, yes, let me pull up his file here. Tap, 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 tap. I don't believe he was in the 10th uh, when I was around. Uh, no, he's on loan uh, with the home uh, from the home fleet. Uh, a captain, a captain, a boss lick. Uh, experience officer. Give me a list of battles. That's all I think I'm interested in. Where has he been? Um, I will put that question to the player playing Kiddick. Has Kiddick been in many battles in the past? Uh, I think the last might have been some stray engagement uh, kind of recently, but not, not too extensive. And the one before that would be... Uh, <sighs> the Battle of Deep Space Nine, perhaps? He was there? Well, in the fray, but when the Klingons swooped in, they kind of swooped out. It's an old ship. Preserve what can be preserved, etc. Yeah, because a as... lot of Miranda class ships uh, were there. Um, that was yeah, before the Yeah, a lot of them were. Um... Then, upon hearing that, um, send a communication over to him. If um, if Captain Grinnan doesn't have all the answers we're looking for in regard to the conflict, I feel like I might have common ground with him. We might be able to... Uh, Take some advice from him. Hi, sir. Uh, I'll pass along the message right away. Any other orders, sir? Not at this time. Hi, sir. And in very snappy order, uh, that message is passed along to you, Captain Kiddick, in text form. 
a message uh, signed by one of the command staff of Tiananmen Min on behalf of Lord Starks, captain of the commanding officer of the Tiananmen. Min. Now, Commander, this is how you do things. Just Your commander kind of nods approvingly, like, yeah. Take note, Ensign, et cetera. Yeah. Um, Lord Starks, you come upon your transporter room, and you see a trio of Starfleet officers. All right, Captain Grinnan, it's been a long time, and I'll extend my hand out. The captain does not reciprocate. Just crosses his arms and says, too long. But at the same time, not long enough. <laughs> the officer at the con kind of gives you a look. Uh, at the con, at the console for the for their transporter kind of gives you a look. But doesn't say anything. Because you do outrank them. <laughs> well, I think we have a lot to discuss. Doctor, is it? Yes. <laughs> and Doctor Efforts, pleased to meet you. Yes, it's very nice to meet you too. And you are, and I'm looking at Varder because I don't know Varder's rank. Uh, you see Pe Lieutenant Pips. Lieutenant? This is my uh, chief of security. Well, um, I have a conference room set up. They can enjoy themselves there. I have just come from Beta Z, so you know I have stocked up on all of the finest from uh, the Star X Estates. Um, you're more than welcome to partake while you're there. I will meet with y'all once I have talked with the captain here. Right. Uh, the ensign here will lead y'all there. And captain, I think we can use my ready room. Of course. Uh, as they leave, the ensign looks over at uh, you, Dr. Efrix, and you, Lieutenant Varder. If you'll follow me, I'll lead you to the conference room. Lead on, ensign. It's just a small knot kind of thing. And, uh, Starix, you would be picking up just a maelstrom of emotion coming from Grenin, just sort of arranging the whole spectrum. On the way, I will be mostly talking about the ship itself. And um, how lovely Beta Z is this time of year. So small talk. I heard that um something happened there recently. I don't know too many of the details. It's uh, an inf fortunate resurgence of a long dormant disease. Uh, I'm sure it'll be resolved soon. Probably nothing more than someone accidentally opening up a vessel that had buponic plague stored in it or something. <laughs> oh, we'll see. As we enter the ready room, then I'll say, uh, can I get you anything to drink? As a note, the threat's just gone up by two due to where you are. Uh-oh. Where are... Uh, okay. Uh-oh. So... Uh, the... We have, um... I have a spiced wine from, uh... Our southern estate, if you're interested. I suppose. I'll begin 
pouring that. So then I take it you're still in your family's good graces then? It's, um, very few people whose bad graces I'm in, actually. Really? You would no. be surprised at the undercurrent of people who may have seen things the way I did and were less than enthusiastic about the Admiral's performance in the Shackleton. <clears throat> the captain's just gonna grit his teeth and, ooh, Starix. That made him mad. It was a rather unfortunate situation, all of it, though. Uh, not quite unlike a Kobayashi Maru situation. You really don't know how it's going to turn out until you get there and has a lot of consequences. And I'll hand you the drink. The captain takes it. Swirls it around, takes a, sets it down, says, you know, I'm going through my own right about now. That may be the reason that I'm here. To be honest, um, there is sort of a new age of cooperation among the Klingons and Romulans. They don't exactly seem to be anywhere near hostilities. Then what's this about? I was sent by um, some of the Admiralty to gauge your opinion on the Calcet and some the situation around them. But um, why you? Oh, it goes to the um, the reason that there are more people that are fine with my current state of affairs than are against it. There's an undercurrent of people who are dissatisfied. Dissatisfied? And... What with? That's what I'm about to get to. But first, I wanted to ask you something. I don't want to... I don't want to broach a contentious issue until we're on the same page. And that page is, I want to know... I want to know if you trust me. And before you answer, I want to jog a little bit down memory lane. I want us to remember when we were on board in a ranger station. I think it's the first time you and me met. We'd both already been part of the 10th fleet for months, but just hadn't had the opportunity yet. And you and your crew had stumbled upon a danger that was more powerful than a single starship and possibly a fleet of starships. And you and me together and the Admiral thought we were going to have to engage in a battle. And I want you to remember who it was who sided with you when you thought you could talk them out of it. The crystalline entities, that is. I want you to remember who it was who trusted you enough to follow through and to speak eloquently and to lead members of Starfleet out of harm's way. I want to reminisce about Romulus and when you and me went there and when I engaged in active sedition with 
a mutinous Romulan. You stood behind me. You did not fight with me against him or the Admiral on Narendra. You stood by me because you knew as well as I did that securing his to Dared X's is what was going to defeat the Archon. <clears throat> and I want to remind you that I trusted you there. I trusted you to talk down the crystalline entities. I trusted you not to immediately turn me over to Starfleet security for working with the Romulan because of how important it was. <clears throat> and I want to remind you of when we actually planned to deal with the Archon. The Admiral walked in the room, stood there, and asked us, the captains, to plan a defense. She didn't try to lead herself. She didn't offer words of encouragement. She didn't draw up a plan for us to debate. She simply acquiesced. And you stood up, and you said that you ceded to me because of my knowledge. You trusted me there, and we survived the Battle of the Archon. I just want you to remember those times that I've trusted you and you've trusted me, and I want to know if you still trust me. Ooh. Ooh, good shit. Um, the captain just looks for a moment, and again, you can get the feeling off of him that he's just thinking it all over. And then he says... When you did what you did, that, well... There's no need to mince words. I intentionally destroyed a Genesis device which had been recovered from rogue Starfleet elements by a rogue Starfleet... by a rogue Romulan Admiral and a member of Starfleet whose job it was to maintain security in the Shackleton Expanse asked me to hand over a device that they should have known existed and they didn't know existed to trust them to destroy it they didn't offer any evidence that i could trust them i had lost so much trust in heppard by that point that i could not trust her to destroy a weapon which could eliminate a planet and I didn't cause any casualties. I didn't destroy any equipment. You know, actually, they charged me with destroying Starfleet equipment. They were talking about the Genesis device. They were planning to destroy it themselves. I destroyed it early, and they still charged me with destroying Starfleet material. That almost kind of asks the question of... What were they actually planning on doing with it if they didn't want it destroyed? But yes, that event. Captain just sighs, he says, Either way, it disappointed me when that happened. So I suppose with everything... That was... I that was we... a failure of the man, not of the captain i i learned over a long time to trust to know when to consult my crew and i let my ideological fervor my distrust in the admiral override my trust of my first officer if it was a failure of anything it was uh it was a failure of tradition and a failure of procedure to triumph over fervor. And the captain sighs and he says, And that's why my trust with you is fractured. It hasn't broken. He points at Starix. It hasn't broken. You still have my trust. But I will not lie and tell you that it's the same as it was. We'll have to hope that's enough. The reason I've come here is there's a proposal on the table for 
a formal entity to be created above the Federation the and the Romulan Star Empire and the Klingon Empire. Uh, drawing from Earth history, it's kind of a, a UN with those three states making up kind of a security council. Other states will be invited, but those three will have controlling interest. And the proposal also puts forth that Starfleet will kind of take a larger role in defending the three polities. And where do I come in? I need you to hold off on delivering the Calcut back to their planet until things settle down. Why? What what does that have anything to do with this with this uh, possible peace? Because there are rogue agents at play and they have a grave interest in the crystals and we cannot allow them to capture them putting them on a planet putting them back on the planet lights a beacon on where to get a cache of crystals i see so what you're saying is that by bringing the crystals back to Calcut, we'd be leading them right to it Yes, and we want to keep an eye on them until the Union is established. Then I have to ask, who is they? It's a group of citizens who come from all areas of the Federation, mostly within Starfleet and the Admiralty itself. I think I've had dealings with them. I wouldn't say dealings. I think I've come up against them. If I'm correct, they're the ones that tried to get me court-martialed. I'm not sure. There's There are several factions at play here. I would have to know who you were talking about. Well, I wish I knew myself. And the captain lets out a laugh, and he says, Let me tell you, I know there are multiple factions at play. And he sort of puts a hand on his, um, puts a, uh, claps a hand to his cheek, and he says, And I'll be completely honest with you, I don't think any of them like... We do. In fact, I'm here specifically because... I trusted you to help us. If it had been left to others, they would have simply reassigned you. And we would have approached Captain Kydlick himself. But I wanted uh, to talk to you first. Oh, that would be the other captain. Oh. Oh, Kydlick. Kydlick. That, that's why I didn't get it. It's Betazoid accent. Leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> it's my Betazoid draw, I guess. <laughs> Betazoid, Betazoid drawl. Is that the same as your Elder drawl? It's it's really common among my characters. <laughs> this is young. But yes. Ah, uh, yes, the, uh, <clears throat> the Yaldiv of Beta Z. Anyhow, um, I see. Um, might I ask why such the large show of, uh, firepower here? Because of those who would stop us? There's 
currently a defiant that's been missing. Keeping track of them is important to me right now, and this ship allows me security. Which defiant? I don't know much about it other than it's all black. Is that the one? I, is that the one I've seen? I don't know if you saw that one. Actually, uh, I think only pen did. Pen did though. Pen did. It's one of the okay. Yeah. I'm just trying to remember. It's one of those we've had a few. It's true. You've run into a few. Oh. Well, I've run into a couple different defiants, but that one doesn't ring any bells. So what's the plan then? Um, you head back to Starbase 21, I'll meet you there to discuss the next stage, and I'll escort the Miranda, the, uh, oh, it's escaping my mind because I can't see the sheet. Oh, would that have Some come up, in, would that have come up in the discussion with, uh, yeah, where I where I received a certain package from. Okay, I I apologize. It's it's one of those things that we never got to actually have the discussion. So, where's the what's the name of the the Miranda that's out there? The oh, Salamander. Salamander. Okay, uh, I'll yes. escort the Salamander to a safe location so they can offload the crystals and be rolled back into the fleet. Understood. And, uh, in the meantime, and he, he thinks it over and he says, I might have a possible lead on your, uh, mystery defiant class, but I, uh, let's just say I need to double check a piece of intelligence I've received, just to be sure. Enough that you think you could hunt them? That would be incredibly valuable if you could find them. It's possible. It's possible, but as you must know, it's it's not going to be that easy, and it would have to be done with utmost secrecy. Do you need anything from me? Not currently. Not currently. It's one of those, I'm not going to know what I'm going to need until I need it. That tends to be the way these go. The captain, uh... <clears throat> the captain sits down on a sort of the little ca yeah or i was gonna say the little couch here and he says you know you're one of the only people who remembers what i was like before the all this happened to me before uh all the intrigue the intelligence the uh cloak and dagger well You'll have a chance to get rid of it. Although, <laughs> if I'm any example, trying to rid yourself of spy masters and rogues can land you in prison. Be careful. I will. Keep in touch, Roland. You can expect me at Starbase 21 in a week. Well, see you in a week, then. 
Uh, do you have any experts on Calcut? I don't have one. <laughs> the captain lets out a slight laugh and he says, um, uh, I have a couple. Okay. Um, in fact, I brought them over with me. Okay. Um, well, because of the Defiant, you're going to need the security officer. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. You're a 50-50 chance against that Defiant. We built them that way for a reason, you know. Yes, yes, I know. Okay. Yeah, uh, the doctor can stay on board. Um, there's also the matter of a... A prisoner transfer. I don't know who it is. They said you would know who was to be transferred. Not that they told you. I, so do obviously, I know? you don't know anything about this, but... They told me that you would have someone that I needed to escort. That your ship was not... Combat a... ready to escort this person. Do you have a name? I know they're not a... They're not a currently serving Starfleet officer. They're... Maybe have been a rogue agent at some point. You're describing one of two people, then. Do you have names? I don't... Not that that's going to help me, but... Uh, yeah, that I wouldn't suppose, help. I um, suppose... Before... I suppose before I tell you the name, do you know if this person's a male or a female? You know what? The orders did say she, but ah. it didn't have a name. Ha. <laughs> well, I'll be honest with you, I've been trying to figure that out myself. She's given me an alias multiple times. Ah. Miss Adler. Well, it sounds like you would like to transfer her personally. See, if you actually find this Defiant, we don't want her anywhere near it. That's the one... That's the specific reason they want her moved here. They? Oh, the members of the Admiralty I spoke to of earlier. And the captain thinks for a moment, he says, Are you familiar with Rear Admiral Ludwinger? Vaguely. Not, um... He didn't give my orders, but I have run into him once or twice in years past. Yeah, but I, uh, oh, did you, did you tell me that name, Pen? Yeah, you know that name. Okay. What about Azalon? Um, um his reaction very closely. I'm told there's someone important. I haven't met them personally. I confess, as we start digging into members of the Admiralty, I know three people, and that name doesn't belong to any of the three of them, but I've heard whispers that they might be I don't know which side they're on, because uh, I've only heard whispers. But they're involved in some way. Right. It's really... I don't know if you've been to headquarters lately, but... Um, it's not a fun place to be. 
Lots of whispering. Lots of whispering. Well, as long as you're sure that our discussions are secure, I think we can proceed. Okay. Um, you can have the lieutenant go and get her and... Whoa, 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 can... whoa, what? Wait, did I hear that? Yeah. Starex, you sense a presence in the room, then it just kind of goes away. It's almost like someone poked their head in and then immediately ducked out, but the door did move. Can I... And being telepathic, can I sense an, an identity? Uh, give me insight command difficulty of two. We got momentum. It's true. You do. That's it. That's if he's using momentum. He might be on the other side. Uh, I think at this point I'm using momentum. Yeah, you, it, you seem to be on the same side currently. Uh... Oh, am I making a deal with the wrong side again? <laughs> it's you, probably. <laughs> to fair, oh, you laugh wow. that's, a, that's a fair comment. <laughs> I'm not hiding anything. Told you everything you wanted to hear. And that you fair, needed to hear. Scoffing. Yes, you told him everything he wanted to hear. I was going to say, you told me everything I wanted to hear. So, uh, how much you want to spend into that role? Uh, I don't think I have a focus. You said insight command? Yeah. Ah, oh, because it Starx is built to be a captain and not a telepathic voodoo person. I have trash <laughs> talents for this. So, oh, uh, three moments. Oh, okay. that's right. If you realize it's Varro, you two hate each other. Oh shit, that's right. I have forgotten about that. <laughs> well, I mean, technically Varro doesn't hate Stark. Starx, on the other hand. Yeah. Oh shit, that's that's old shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's from like more than a year ago. That's first arc. That's first ten episodes. Yeah. Oh. Um, awesome. Oh, that's satisfying. It really is. And like M myth, you penned like myth, you penned and I are like the only ones who can appreciate that in its entirety. Um, yep. Well, and Starix, but yeah. Um. Yeah. So you were. I'm. I'm not gonna, you know, flinch at anything that happened. I'm gonna let you continue where you were talking. Well, I suppose I'll be seeing you in a week. I'll give. Uh, I'll give the doctor orders to um. <clears throat> to render her assistance and her <laughs> expertise as he cr and he uh he smiles as the tenth fleet's official expert on the cow kit that'll be good although it is somewhat distressing that the leading expert is only a lieutenant commander i Fain it so uh, that there may be some inexperience in our understanding on the Calcat. Not the officers' inexperience, but Starfleet's as a whole. I'll have to confess I haven't ran into them before. Well, but if a lieutenant commander is the fleet wide expert, uh it's like the it's like knowing that we have a fleet wide expert on the Borg who's a lieutenant commander. Hmm. Well, <laughs> get wrecked, Kim. Um. 
Well, let's just say she is extremely experienced, but, well, she doesn't particularly have any aspirations for command. Prefers to devote herself purely to her work. That's good. I've never met someone devoted to their work who plots and contravenes and does unfortunate things, but I'll tell you definitely people who love their promotions tend to do those things. Mm. Well, I leave her to your, um, uh, I leave her to your care. Okay. I will see you in a week. Well, uh, we should go meet your officers. Mm -hmm. All right, a uh, new scene. Okay, lose momentum. <laughs> oh, whipper schnapper. Oh yeah, we're leaving FX Air and going this way with one ship expecting an attack. Do do do. I mean, if Grant's right, you're the noises. one who's the hunter, not the hunted. Angry tactical noises. Do you come in in the uh, the conference room, which isn't that far from the ready room, honestly? Uh, where Lieutenant Commander Efrix and Lieutenant Varder are being kept company by an ensign who's who for the last while has just been, you know, if you need anything, just been standing vigilant because your two senior officers who are uh, invited aboard the ship, so they're making sure you if you need anything, they can grab you a drink, grab you a pad, whatever, you know. Murder from just their jobs to and talk to Efrix and that's about it. The answer's been keeping their respectful distance then, because you both outrank them by way too much. <laughs> you also an eye on the door because you know all of your trust. Have you had a chance to sample our red? One of the benefits of being a civilian that's been pressed into service, I have some liberties with cargo. <laughs> and, they, and the captain holds up a I'm going to say the captain holds up a bottle and he says, it's good <laughs> sorry, I'm okay I'm pretty sure like you're actual alcohol on duty is not allowed yeah, apologies sometimes I forget what era we've moved into when I started it wasn't that difficult to, if you knew someone in medical, to get a, uh, to get a hypo for that kind of thing. <laughs> Anyhow. Or not to have to. Especially while presently on duty. They don't make synthahol on Beta said. No, they do not. Anyhow, uh, Lieutenant Commander, uh, I'm going to be, uh, uh, requesting a temporary week-long transfer for you to um, uh, to the Tianan men. Captain? But, not to question your authority, sir, but is that a good idea, given our cargo? Uh, currently a much uh, larger piece of cargo that you have very specific expertise with is going to be accompanying them. The salamander is going to be accompanying the Tianan men for the next week. Of course. And, what about and, us? and given your expertise in all things Cowcat, uh, <laughs> we felt it was uh, it would be a good idea. I'll hand Varder a pad with uh, a couple of sparse details that I've collected on the Defiant. I kind of accept the idly, but he's still looking at ground like, what are we doing instead? Because our, our velocity noise, our orders are escort the salamander to Calcut. Aside from meet up with this thing for potential yeah, diplomatic harder. problems, but this doesn't sound diplomatic anymore. Something that we need to 
uh, look into. You should discuss it when you get back to your ship. You want to exactly. have everybody on board. And I point to the wine. That is some good stuff to get some discussion done over. We'll probably need Dr. Efrix for preparations beforehand and return her afterwards. And the, and the captain uh, looks at Varder and says, uh, In addition, I need you to prepare the transfer of our guest, Miss Adler. Captain? Our next assignment might be rather dangerous for her. Uh, was she ever actually reported as a prisoner that we had on the ship, or... Uh, I'm trying to figure out how we did that, because she's not in the brig, she's just kind of a guest on the ship. Like, a legitimate guest, not even snarky guest. Uh, check the fleet log real quick. See and... If Officially noted. Uh... Grinnan might recall that I didn't. I don't actually know who it is. Yeah, I know it in the fleet log. That's the thing of we don't normally transfer guests. <laughs> right. <That's>, you know, <laughs> that, that's the thing that catches immediately is, yeah. Right. Currently, the status of matters is. Um... The Kismet might be going into a hostile situation, and for the safety of our civilian guest, we are asking that she transfer to another ship. We are no, asking, Captain. Hmm? No, no, that's the, are we actually asking, or are we being told we're asking? But without saying the last bit. <sighs> she will be leaving the Kismet by the end of the day. Understood, Captain. And then what is our ship's tasking? If not continuing on our way to Calcut? That is something that we'll be discussing back aboard the Kismet. So, uh, you know, definitely just eyeing the captain and then eyeing his, uh, friend. Well, I will escort y'all to the transporter room. Y'all have many things to take care of. Uh, we should definitely have quarters for you when you get back, doctor. We have no diplomats on board yet as I've taken the captain's quarters so you're more than welcome to some of the better quarters on the ship and I will walk out leading people out of the room I presume P, uh, the uh, Kismet crew falls after Starek mm -hmm. is that unusual like I've heard of civilians being commissioned into service, but never commissioned into service as diplomat and captain of a vessel. Um, in a, in certain situations, again, it's more of an early Federation thing. It's more a TOS era thing where a, a high commissioner will be tasked with something of great importance to the Federation Council and they're given, normally by it's sort of like having an admiral board where the admiral usually lets the captain of the ship uh, do what they want, so long as their the mission of the commissioner is uh, attained. In very rare instances where the commissioner has enough Starfleet, uh, has relevant experience, they might take command. Or so there might have been a captain for aboard the Tianan Min, or he or the Lord Starks was just assigned as the commanding officer for the duration of the mission. Well, I'm going to assume the actual captain's not here if this guy's taking the captain's quarters. That's a pretty safe assumption, yeah. <laughs> this just sounds like some old Federation potential that hasn't been used or relevant in generations but is now being dusted off for some uh, alternative purpose. As yeah, a it's, it's a weird reality. thing, because High Commissioner is you is usually a very... You have them for one mission or like one 
arc of missions, mm -hmm. and then they go, okay, have your ship back. Why? I'm not Starfleet, so yeah. I'm going back home. <laughs> I'm just putting things together, and I'm a bit slow right now with this whole being sick thing, so <laughs> It's fine. Your, your character has reasons to be a little fuzzy, too. Um, crystals and all. Yeah. Oh! Um, sorry, because I will note, I just kind of uh, realized, um, you see, uh, you can sense, and now that you've encountered him again, um, and he's talked with you a bit more at, at length, you kind of sense that he's a little more aware of his surroundings than Grenin and Afrix. Like he's, he's having, he has that sort of twitch people have when they are aware of people around them. Actually, as if he, he as if he's start? psionic in some way or empathic. Yeah, I was going to say, would he be picking up that Varder is psionic? That's kind of what it is, but it, it wouldn't make sense to Starex because it's like, the Bajorans like... aren't known for being psionic, so. Um, then, as we're walking down the hallway, um, so, Dr. Efrix, I'm told you're somewhat of a specialist. In uh, the cow kit? Yes. And I turn around and completely in my mind, non-verbally, I look at Varder and I say, do you have any specialties in this area? The voice seems to echo in your head. Um, let's see, we know he's a Betazoid, so there's that. <laughs> I'm just trying to judge if they're surprised or not. Probably not. It's just gonna or just stop. Give that blank kind of huh stare to uh, oh. Starks and uh, some to a extent. And he actually says that. Uh, Very interesting crew you've got here, Captain. And that was verbal. This crew has been dealing with Calcut for quite some time, and we all know our jobs around it. I imagine there's a lot of work for y'all in the future. The Calcut are going to be a favored species very soon. We will have lots of trade and negotiations, I imagine. So someone's managed to talk more with them and get them to uh, actually respond rather than just say, no, leave us alone, please. No, I'm extrapolating based on experience with some crystals that Grinnan has crossed before that they might have this capability. You step into the transporter room and you, have, you see an officer waiting there. Uh, a return journey to the Kismet is in order. In Hi, sir. How many, sir? Uh, looks like a captain, a lieutenant commander, a lieutenant, and a healthy body, a bottle of ale. <laughs> that was a, a weird slip, my bad. It's a kind of furs about you from what looks over at Grenin. Oh, healthy bottle of ale. If you'll yeah. step on the pad, please. Nothing implied there, Grinnan, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> and the captain's gonna get ready to go. When you're ready, Ensign. Aye, sir. I'll notify you when they're ready to return, Ensign. I see. Well, isn't, isn't Efrix staying on board? 
or we're bringing a I think after just going back to do some like prep on the kismet and then go back to uh, oh I mean that's the, the justification barter used yes yes uh oh <laughs> you mean uh oh okay. uh new scene do you not trust barter <laughs> do you as the three of you are beamed back on board the kismet <sighs> Oh, no. no place like home. Oh, Captain, I believe there are some okay. explanations so that are to be had. Yes, yes, there, there are. There are quite a few explanations in order. Should Miss Adler be present for these? Actually, I think it would be best that she were. Understood. Have her uh, brought up to the conference room. I will retrieve her, sir. Uh, Dr. Efrix, make whatever preparations you need to make. Sir. Do you... Do you think this is a good idea? Starix is a lot of things, but at the end of the day, he's a man who truly does believe that what he's doing is for the best, and he's seen me through some dicey situations on their own, and despite some of his personal missteps, I do trust the man. And if that trust turns out to be misplaced, then that is entirely on me. Captain, one might believe they're doing the right thing doesn't always make it the right thing. I know. I know. But, and he shrugs and he says, in this era of rogues and spy masters, you can never be sure of anything. And he walks out of the room. I guess Barker's right. going to find. Just not him. going to heat. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ooh, this is, this is rough. I, uh... I'll see you in the ready room, Ephrix. I was gonna go find Adler, which is reasonably easy, I imagine, with that whole psychic connection thing. Yeah. I'm gonna check on things in the med bay and uh, uh, some of my notes on the cockpit. going to change who's there. These people aren't here yet. Um, oh, actually, uh, I will actually cut to the mid bay because there's something that's going to happen there. I oh, no. I thought maybe. Uh, for one, you're not there. You're probably stepping in. You'll be heading down there. I'll let you know, Doctor, when you walk in. Okay. Uh, yeah, so, Penn, you're in uh, sick bay. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, I would have taken a chair and a bottle with me. Geez, you are a good spy. You're able to steal Grenin's wine. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've, I've got my own stuff. Oh, before fine. he even gets back, you've stolen that. But then you can't drink it because it won't do anything. <laughs> yeah, so I'll head on through the other side of the force field and take a seat. So, how long do you intend to sleep?
would I be able to let down my mental guards to allow this? Oh, dear. Um, I would say uh, fitness command difficulty of... I will say two. Spend that momentum. I take a threat so I can prop bold. Oh, sure. okay. Yeah. Yeah, that works. Composure? Yeah. yeah. Oops, wrong music. There we go. That would have sounded very silly. And we get a momentum. <laughs> the GM wants to put on the the uh, creepy piano music and accidentally puts on um, uh, the Benny Hill theme. <laughs> well, same difference, right? Yeah, yeah pretty much. It's just just minor alterations of the same the basic tonality. <laughs> you seem to be in a red fog. Oh no, in the distance again. there are black clouds on the horizon all in all directions do i see anyone else there yes we can also see uh myth and ever and the captain oh no you shouldn't see those people there you go canal brag So, how long do you do you intend to sleep? Unfortunately, it appears that my connection with my body is not as strong as I'd hoped. There's still a part of my katra, my soul. That's tied to Calcat directly. How was it that Azalon got your body? That I really don't know. I'm afraid most of my memory for the few weeks after we left, Calcut 2 is hazy at best. I left a large part of myself on Calcut when we departed. And kept just enough within my body to continue my duties until I could return. That resulted in a critical misstep on my part wasn't functioning at my best and on Romulus I was shot yeah, after I've... that I have no memory of what happened to my body but you do know who she is yes and what she is a part of and Navarro kind of grimaced Yes, I do. So you know who I am? I didn't when we were serving on board ship. You have some impressive mental defenses. Better than some Tal Shiar agents. Believe me, I worked counterintelligence long enough. Well, we raised, quite literally raised within the Starfleet intelligence. You don't get much of a choice. I'd say there's some distinction between Section 31 and Starfleet intelligence, wouldn't you? 
Well, with things how they are right now, it's getting clearer by the day. Yes. They've always been an insidious act. But before the war, I felt much better about being able to work with them. On occasion. My worry is that this isn't a cell of 31 acting. This is the entire entity. With the strides they've made recently, I wouldn't be surprised. It only complicates matters further that many of their members wear multiple hats. Do you have someone I can contact, an old contact of yours, who I can try to gain assistance from? Because at the moment, with, with what I've just done to retrieve you, my list of friends uh, has shrunk to probably a handful. Varl kind of nods and looks to the side. There are a few people who I know won't be compromised. But I can only guarantee a handful. Ben just has a, a smile on his face. I truly did enjoy serving under you and the captain. It was nice to step into the light, however brief it was. And Far gives that little smirk that's just barely detectable. I know what you mean. I fear it's only darkness ahead. Perhaps. This is a... a repetition of things that have happened before, Bragg. The long arc of history loops many times over. And since the war We've moved into a new reality for the Alpha Quadrant. There are aspects... There are aspects of... All of the major powers that don't want a progress beyond the status quo. tribalism that has plagued so many worlds is now playing out on an uh, interstellar scale. It's only a shame I couldn't keep the captain away from this. I'd rather take the burden myself. And uh, when you say that, kind of, I've been looking down in thought for a minute, and his head snaps up and he says, I made that mistake. Don't. <laughs> well, it seems we both... There's a reason. There's a reason that both of us were put on the kismet. Harmon Grennan will one day be an amazing officer. Currently, he's a competent captain and an excellent diplomat. He has potential for far more. Agreed. And that's why I want to keep him away from the darkness as long as possible. <sighs> yes. 
path shouldn't be stepping into the dark. But he needs to learn to wield his light so that he can keep it at bay. What would you suggest comes next? Because whether it be a war or a shadow war, sides are going to need to be picked. Agreed. I can give you a short list of people. Get into contact with them. The upper echelons of counterintelligence have kept the more vicious aspects of Section 31 at bay in the past. I'm afraid that there may have been an upset within those ranks that's allowed them to progress this far. Do you consider Roland Starrix one of those allies? He was a good captain in the war. I don't know much more than that. He wouldn't get along with me philosophically. But would you trust him? I'd like to roll on that one. Uh, roll to what effect, sorry? Just to be clear. Um, I'd like to roll a insight roll of some sort about Star X. Uh, given that you're getting, st um, well, you did almost, you did reach out to him a bit. Um, uh, <laughs> I could provide a little context that he would already know. This is Varro, right? Yes. So you'll know that Starix does have a disagreement with you, but it's only because of like, he felt your, your actions at the first court martial were personal and not professional. Mm -hmm. It, nothing other than that like it's it has nothing to do with his thought of your political or or other stances it's purely because he thought you were you personally disliked him fair <laughs> that's the sense you would have gotten because we i did we did step aside so that's the sense you would have gotten in that conversation a year ago mm -hmm. cool uh, but you can uh, attempt uh, insight command difficulty of three. All right. Would that count as any sort of social conflict? It, uh, yeah. All right, cool. Then I could proc cold reading off of that. I'll buy a die. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> An insight command. Oh, um, there we go. Was it difficulty two? A difficulty three. So we gain the momentum back, and then there's a bonus momentum which can be used for the obtain information spend. Um, so you were trying to get insight on, just to make sure I answer your question properly. I was trying to gain insight on <sighs> Captain Star in terms of being a reliable actor against the antics of an organization like Section 31. Essentially, should I trust him? Okay, I'll type out the answer to that. It's, I have to be careful how I word it. Mm -hmm. Naturally.
All right. So Varro looks to Penn and says, I trust that Captain Starks is a moral man and that he will do what he thinks is best for the Federation. However, I don't know how much he trusts Starfleet. So forces that preserve the Federation that are outside of Starfleet purview may be able to influence I would be cautious, but optimistic. I'll keep that in mind. For now, I'll... I'll work with the contact ship you can give me. Yes. Despite her... troublesome activities, Irene Adler would be a good resource in this coming conflict. Uh, I agree, she is troubling, but she doesn't seem She does get wish. things yeah. done. And especially now that she is connected to the ocean, she has a vested stake in this fight. I'll see what I can do. Furthermore, I'd say... Nadia? You won't find a last name. But... Connect to the right intelligence structures and you will come into contact with her I think you know the one understood and then Vara will also give Penn like three other names that I don't have <laughs> <Yeah>. <clears throat> if you need help while you're still still like this you can always reach out again I'll kind of twist his head to the side. Maybe. It takes effort. Maybe, but... Maybe I was could... trained in this. He says and kind of looks around. But nothing like this. Maybe the act of reaching out will also help with your recovery. It's worth keeping in mind. Thank you. Goodbye, Commander. And I'll start walking off and dissipating. Commander. Ooh, buddy. <laughs> uh, Efrix, uh, you w uh, walked into your med bay. You kind of checked on Varro briefly to see how he was, and... Uh, Oh, apparently Penn's lying on the floor as he apparently fell out of his chair with a bottle in his hand. And he <laughs> was very the This is why we don't drink on the rug. Well, if that's uh, what I... everyone thinks, that's perfect. Uh, I check on Penn. I don't think that's why you passed out. It's just... Uh, you can give me reason medicine difficulty of one. biology. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you that. Uh, it would seem that Penn is in the middle of a psionic event that he is coming out of. And he kind of, his eyes kind of flutter open as he kind of wakes up with you scanning him. Something you want to share with the class? <laughs> <laughs> Mommy Eprich is mad. Oh. 
Okay, love it. Um, sorry, Doctor, the less you know of what's just happened, the better. Feeling a lot of that today. Well, good thing you're up. The captain has some kind of plan. Oh, the okay. confidence. Listen, I just don't like being uh -huh. out of my med bay, okay? Hey, I'm not kicking Fair. you out of your med bay. What, what's happening? No, 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 not you. Sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> apparently, I am being put on loan. To who? Uh, what's the name of this ship? Oh, the Tiananmen. The Tiananmen. So to Starrex. Specifically for cockat knowledge, which, let's be fair, I have a decent amount. Apparently. A uh, penned. Sorry. Uh, you both hear that Penn's comm badge kind of makes a weird chirp, like he's being he's basically being paged, that he has a message waiting for him in the ship's computer. Mm. Oh, well, I got a missed call. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did tell you that the captain has plans. He's just got like an armful of pads and like, shall we see who, who it was? Or would you like privacy? Um, just a moment of privacy and I'll meet you up at the the meeting. I check on Varro real quick. Uh, can I just use your office for a moment? Of course. Um... As you're looking at that pen, Efrix, you can give me another reason medicine. This one's difficulty of two. Um, phenobiology or Don Carbon? Uh, yeah, I'll give you the focus. Okay. Uh, I'm going to spend again. Okay. Uh, glad I did. Somehow I think you're going to re-roll that zero. Yeah. Wild guess. Yeah, re-roll the one. It's fine. Two. Uh, it, it would seem that uh, the patient is has undergone a significant amount of uh, psychic strain. Hmm. Given that I found Mr. Penn having a... Uh, Experiencing a psychic a psychic event, uh, not not surprised. And penned. Ah, lost my earbud. Um, you uh, notice a, you pull up the message, presumably, uh, and yes. it's a simple text message. Ooh, text message. Ooh. Everything's fine. No one worry about a thing. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the trend. That's the trend that we have on this ship. Everything's <laughs> fine. We just go off on regularly scheduled missions. Accomplish our objective. Convert back to <sighs> admirals who have our best interests at heart. See, see, he gets it. Out of char character, could I get clarification on that? Because my brain's just not putting that together. Um, you can roll for me. Uh, insight plus security, difficulty one. Wait, in character, out of character? Yeah, is like the message I got, like, out of character, my brain is just not putting two and two together. 
Uh, yeah, th- that that message is word for word what was sent to you. Um, yeah, yeah. Now, whether your character understands it more than you, the player does, that's what the rules for. Yeah, that, that, that's what I'm assuming. It's just like the play is just like I'm not getting that. Uh, take a threat. Sure. Intelligence operative. Yes. I'm going to re-roll the zero. Got to word this very carefully. Give me a second. I know what it is. It's just one of those like, um, but I don't want to over-say. I mean, I'll be going off what the the first message is. It's just like I said, brain's just not putting two and two together. But you did get the roll, though, and you actually get a momentum out of it, so I'll be able to clarify it. I just try, trying to reword it a bit. Uh... Yes, I apologize oh. to the rest of the senior staff. Your commander is an idiot. <laughs> we know. Oh. I was about to say this that. is news. Oof. Guys. Oof. Well, when all he of you want saving, I'll busy. fucking remember. <laughs> hey, you said it. Yeah. Yeah, but it doesn't mean you corroborate it. <laughs> <laughs> Just well, reinforce it. I'm concerned things. about pins, like, in my office. Like, pass out. The comms all blows up. <laughs> oh, fuck. Pen's uh, uh, pen's quarters blow up. Yeah, I'll I'll do that. Uh, it requires a control engineering difficulty of th- difficulty of what? Three. Intelligence operative? Yes. I'll spend a momentum. Okay. Oh, he got it on the button. Yeah, I couldn't believe I actually made that. See, you say that, but this could be important with what the message is. And it's not my fault, the player is a dum dum. Well. I know how that bit. works, though. <laughs> All of my characters are smarter <laughs> than I am. Yeah, it's role playing, it's made for fantasy. Yeah. See, if you if you switch it up and you play a Tellerite, you don't have to play that way. I mean... <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong, but considering what's happening at the moment, you need a modicum of intelligence. Mm-hmm. Uh, feel free to type out your message. I mean, I played a, uh, a very, very... Well, a, an engineer. Something that I will never be able to be who never used any technical lingo, now that I think of it. <laughs> because I couldn't be asked to, uh, to pick up the book and roll on the technical lingo table. Mm-hmm. My greatest challenge was an android who used the contraction y'all too much to be an android. <laughs> y'all too much. <laughs> nah, if there's trip was your designer, it's fine. I, I should I, I'm, I'm just picturing the Vamusila varmint 
seen <laughs> Data Wine, yeah. yeah. Oh god, that episode. Bam, moose, your little varmint. Yeah, uh, it's full of datas. Uh, I had think... way too much fun with that episode, I swear. Oh, yeah. He had way too much fun with data in mm -hmm. general. It's true. Brent Spiner drew the like the long straw and got to do all the fun. Mm. A lot of makeup though. A lot of makeup. That's the downside. Yeah, no. If, <laughs> if you hear okay. interviews from him, he didn't love that. So I, I, I have an idea. I'm going to play it how I think. If it's wrong, well, fuck me. Yeah. But yes, I am ready to continue after. after yeah. So up to the conference room, one presumes. One would presume. Boop. However, that oh, might be yeah. dangerous in this age of spy masters and rogues. <laughs> uh, any preparation Captain Grinnan does as he steps oh, into the conference room. Man, we are room. getting our mileage out of that. I was going to say that exact phrase. That exact phrase. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting our mileage out of that phrase. Mm hmm It's a good phrase. I gotta come I, I gotta one up that somehow. Uh-huh. I mean it's taken me a year and I haven't one upped it. That's, <laughs> oh. that's the pinnacle of my speeches in the very first one. No luck after mm -hmm. that. Yeah. So uh, any preparation I'm going to do? Yeah. Uh, not really, because it's one of those things of I hold all the cards. Well, no, not no. It's not that I hold all the cards, but it's I I know as much as I think I'm gonna know until the rest of the gang shows up. Okay. So you're gonna summon your senior staff? Yeah. Okay. I definitely and... just heard summon as in like arcane ritual i mean same difference just, summon them. <laughs> just draws a pentagram on each chair uh -huh. no he draws a starfleet in, uh, insignia uh... Uh, i actually believe captain kiddick is about to be summoned uh for a briefing aboard the uh kismet because by extension the salamanders under the aegis of the uh kismet so uh they're, th th that captain kind of needs to know what the Kismet's doing, <laughs> so they know what they're doing. Yeah, especially since you're dealing with their cargo. Especially <laughs> because you're dealing with my cargo. It's like, hey, I know you're the senior ship and all, but could you, like, loop me in here a little? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> What's no, going on? You're, 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 you're carting me off with another adult? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Especially one that isn't commanded by a Starfleet officer. Mm -mm. Mm. Mm. Oh, Adler's being brought in? Oh, that's hilarious. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, no. That's why Varder went off to get Adler. She gets a good seat? Damn. To be fair, she's the captain's favorite. Yeah, that's true. Just because she's sleeping with the captain does not mean that she gets the seat. <laughs> no, no, he hasn't gotten there at fire. Um, only because they're in the only... <laughs> and to be fair the only one who spent an extended period of time with it in a confined space is Pend so it's yeah, true this is happened. like the weirdest measuring contest ever <laughs> it's not yeah. who's actually done it it's who's can come up with a sentence that kind of in suggests they've done it yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that's one of those Oh, the worst. I've spent so yeah, much time with it, I've just gone past annoyance. <laughs> I will say, Captain Kiddick, uh, unless the Kismet's gone out of the way to brief you, uh, there's this civilian woman who's sitting at the end of the table. You know, and oh, he's, gonna leave he's seen her. Met. He's seen her. She dropped her face, remember, when she passed out. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. But Kiddick's going to lean over to uh, Ephrix and ask, why is... Well, it's colder here. Uh, 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 uh. It's an ensign. They're, they're not. Uh, oh. 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 Uh. Well. She's. She isn't wearing a uniform, right? Oh, no. She's just. She's wearing a, a black uh, jumpsuit. 
there may have been some things you weren't told about a certain incident. Uh, it looks like Kiddick is um, fighting the urge to uh, do the flip the table gesture. Uh, Unfortunately, the table's too big, so. And it's I of, mean, and probably I, bolted to the ground. I mean, I, I don't know. Fine, I could never lift this table. <laughs> Oh, and I don't know if you guys saw it in the Kismet chat. I, I provided a picture that would probably work well for Kiddick. Oh, we talked no. about it. It's, no. Nope. Kiddick is uh, a tall, uh, androgynous person, but with mask features, uh, as in a, a boxier chin, and, uh, well, uh, cheekbones for days. Ah. Purple... Uh, back slick, not shoulder length hair. Uh, it's essentially very imposing because they're tall, uh, but also pretty. Well, pretty. Ah, okay. Thought I'd try to find something. Um, oh, good. Thank you for the effort. Yeah, at the end of the table, you notice that uh, it appears that Adler is. Uh, Idly folding and unfolding a cloth that she has at hand. And she kind of paying more attention to it than you guys, really. Is it the bag that has been emptied? Uh, no, it's just like a hand cloth. Hmm. Like now, a kerchief or something. I'd like to thank you all for coming. This is a little more... Uh, uh, a little larger than most senior staff meetings that I call, but... Um, I think that uh, for most of what has to be said, it's good that you're all here for it. Uh, there's been a slight change in plans. Uh, Captain Kiddick, you and the Salamander will be um, uh, will be joining, uh, will be splitting off from us, and will be accompanying the uh, Tiam An Min. Mm-hmm. Do you have a written order about this, signed by an admiral? Because we're not supposed to... Well, we're, we're not supposed to uh, divert course. Because we're going to cock it too. Right. As things stand, uh, there is... Uh, circumstances have arisen that lead me to believe that if you... Uh, proceed directly to Calcut, you and the Calcut crystals will be put in extreme danger if you proceed there with due haste. Oh boy. Uh, hmm? Psionics? No. Oh, okay. Well, Captain, this sounds a little bit odd to me. I thought the Kismet were taking us there, but now you're you have another mission? Yes, and it is a mission that, if we were to bring... Wow. fuck. Oh, dear. That was you <laughs> getting a threat, by the way. Oh, okay. Uh... Wow, fucking really? And the eye insists? No, I'm gonna fuck L determination that, that with both eyes open. Okay. Minus yeah, the, out. it was a spelling mistake. Okay. Okay. I was gonna say something very mean there. I take, I feel bad just thinking that. Sorry. It is there a, we go. Fuck you. It is a mission. <laughs> <laughs> it is a mission that if we brought you and the Calcut crystals along, it would put you in more danger than it would, uh, than you would, uh, if you proceeded directly mm -hmm. to Calcut. This is the course of action that will put you in the least danger. Well, honestly, I don't see why you're being sent off to willy-nilly look for something else while you're on a mission. What this is, is me trying to make it safe to bring the Calcut back home. Because currently, it isn't. Hmm. Uh, 
Captain. Oh. This isn't just some lark. That strategy in its own right makes very little sense. We have three ships here, and you're suggesting to send two off in one direction and the other in another, in the hopes of encountering one other ship, which, looking at this, has the potential of destroying any of us if caught alone. That sounds like a convenient way of getting rid of someone. Would I have been able to read the specs for that ship? Uh, just not pad. Yet. The virus got the pad. Captain can't say not yet if it's being slowed across the table to pen at that moment. Which is whatever that Defiant class ship had. Uh, yeah, I assume I, I know exactly what ship it is. And, uh... The concern is that if we, uh, the concern is if we bring the salamander to bear against the foe that we, I want to say, hope to, uh, defeat, it will put the Kalkit in extraordinary danger. Now, we don't want to just leave you on your own. Our next best option is to leave you with another vessel. <sighs> hold, hold, hold on. So, they're sending a diplomatic ship. This is still a diplomatic ship, right? To look for a ship. And the captain, the captain looks around the table and he says, Yes, we are a diplomatic flagship. But we are also equipped to <clears throat> to fight back if need be. Fight There's back. a reason why yes. Starfleet has put us on the front line more than once. Captain, do I have to remind you that there's an Akira class, a ship specifically built to fight out there. Why don't they send that one? We're dealing with sentient life here that needs to be brought home. Because we don't, uh, because we might be the only ones who have a chance of tracking down this enemy. Which means we have a better chance of finding them before they attack the salamander, if we maintain our original course. Also, two vessels offer better protection than one. Especially a vessel that seems underprepared for what task it's been given. Such that it needs to accept a loan of experts from us. We are not the most agile ship. We're quite fast, but we're not that fast. That's the problem <clears throat> but we are hardened veterans most of us at least and the other the other half are oh, no. He's been... very dedicated to starfleet i know and i don't like being the ones i don't like being the one to tell you to just turn tail and run no i'm not saying that Use as a decoy, lure the ship out, take it out. Two ships against one. I'm not going to use sentient life forms as a decoy. Oh, well, you don't have a choice. I'm not. I'm not splitting off from my. <sighs> I'm Captain. not altering course. Mm -hmm. Oh, Captain. Either I'm saying... Yes. There's nothing yes. that mentions we need to keep the Calcut. On the salamander. You can move it to your ship. I don't mind. But I'd have to stay and watch for it. That makes sense and is understandable, but if the latest intelligence this hijacked ship has is that the salamander has the cow kit and apparently wants to stop that, 
if we just change where it is and still use the salamander as bait, there's no additional risk aside from the ship and its crew, at which point it is its captain's choice on that matter. If it is deemed right. acceptable. We could then transfer command of the salamander off to uh, uh, to the Akira class, and when the Defiant shows up, that sounds like a plan. That right. I agreed to. I'll have to. Con I'll have to run it by the uh, com uh, the commander of the. Um, why do I keep blanking on its name? The Tiananmen. Tiananmen. Like the, the square in, China, in Beijing. Ah. Tiananmen Square. Yes. Yeah. When you say that, Adler slams her hand to the table, and you can see it. it you can see the glass cracks for a second as she seemed to have embedded the cloth into it. She stands up. Excuse me. I need to go to the refresher. <clears throat> Miss Adla, I will follow you. Whatever you need to do. She just starts storming out of the room. Oh no. I'll keep with her. And once they're both gone, because that means Adler can't hear them, ha ha. Uh, <laughs> during uh, Admiral Layton's attempted coup in the Dominion War, the Tian An Men was used against Adler's companions at the uh, future area of Wartburg. She has rather strong feelings about it. And I almost handed her right over to them. Indeed. That would have gone well. Not to mention, Captain, uh, Captains, our this ship's specific cargo, which needs to reach Calcutt, would not do well, I imagine, by a diversion. That was no. what I was trying to get back, get to also, Captain. I've already told you. Well, what do you think, Varder? That seem to well, what do you think, Varder? Would it, um... Would we be able, do you think we'd be able to give, um, uh, do you think we'd be able to give, uh, Lord Starrix enough information to, uh, be prepared? <sighs> be prepared for an attack, sir, or? Yes. What we're essentially, what we're essentially proposing is to uh, uh, is to try to lure this defined class out of the shadows by using the salamander as bait. I, I thought that was both our vessels then being used as uh, catchers. My concern, my concern, is having the cow kit anywhere near the Defiant. We outpace a Defiant class. Yes, sir. As a question, that is me can't articulate properly with this sore voice. Yeah. That would be correct, Lieutenant. In addition, I do have to reason with Lord Starrix in this matter, Captain Kinnick. I hope you understand that. Well, I will be present for those reasonings. The strategy being offered uh, comes across more in line with something you would expect of a resistance, Captain. Using one ship as a diversion or one group as a diversion while two others make an escape. We are not in that position. You're talking to someone who knows very well what that position is. Unless there is information that we are not being informed of, which puts us as a Starfleet vessel in that position against another Starfleet vessel, I don't know what to say. We 
The captain just stops and he steeples his fingers and he puts his uh, head into his hands. Any one of these could either go off without a hitch or end catastrophically. Hold on, stop, stop. I have to resolve something. Um, crud. All right, cool. Uh oh. Cool. Uh, Lord Starx, uh, you're gonna want to roll for me a post uh, presence command because you're being attacked. I mean, it is my best stat. So let's hope for the I best. I'm not here to have um, a good time, and I'm honestly feeling so attacked right now. <laughs> uh, would persuasion or intimidation be applicable? Intimidation probably applies at this point, because, uh, okay. yeah. <laughs> I think I have the best presence command track here. I have 12. I have a 17. I do. Um, I I'm will... also immune, immune against the intimidation. I will spend one moment oh wait um actually i feel like this is an apt moment i'll spend both momentum and a determination on um can you look at my sheet and see which one applies because I, I forgot i didn't do that <laughs> um... oh yeah I'm thinking the first one. Do not get your determination back. Rip. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> the master's laughing. Uh, That's a bad sign. She activates her determination. Oh no. I will not, I will not suffer our destroyers. Um, oh, that's poetic. Yeah. Um. <laughs> okay, well, then that's three dice and a determination I'm rolling. She'll buy an extra die, because you did. Can I oh, direct and, her for um... shits and giggles? Uh, no, you, you did, all you see from her is you're talking to her, and then you you can actually psychically feel a pul just this rage just radiating off of her. Like, you can, you can almost taste oh. that she's so angry. Does that no, mean Varner um, feels that, too? Hey, GM, yeah. I don't technically want can you look at the very, f the the back on the notes on my sheet? I think that may be applicable because I'm not looking for violence here. Um, uh, <laughs> that's true. Yep, that would apply. Huh? That makes Ooh. her life interesting. Thank you. Uh, uh oh. Oh no, she gets to roll at zero. Thankfully. That's um, an advantage from, what, 10 months ago from Vogel? Hmm. Uh, I got six. No, I got six, and uh, their successes are reduced by one. Yeah. yeah. You essentially got one more than they, – they have one less success than they should have. They got so if anything they got four hits, overall. So two momentum. Yep. Um, you feel the pulse come off of her suddenly, penned, and you could it's palpable, and then she just kind of. <sighs> Did she just try to psychically kill him? You do realize I can feel that. Psychically maim, not kill. Sorry, I'm dealing with. A personal matter. I will. Oh, um, if you like, um, I do need to stay in the refresher and deal with my current issue. Um, but if you want, she points to the uh, device on her neck. If you want to keep track of me, I am wearing this, and it should be attached to the medical computer. So, uh, if you want to stay outside the door, that's fine. I just need to concentrate on this. I. I nearly did something that may have complicated my life way more than it needed, so... Well, considering I currently need your assistance, yes, you may have. Thank you. And I'll wait outside. Okay. Feel free to continue the conference. I needed to resolve that rule, because 
yeah. what happened uh, really ticked Adler off. Ooh. Ooh. You almost really pissed off your girlfriend. Uh, the way I'm seeing it right now, Captain, we can onboard the cow kit and Captain Kiddick here and make all speed towards cow kit 2 while the salamander and uh, the hard to pronounce ship, the Tianan Min, make their way at uh, the fastest the Tianan Min can manage with the salamander and tractor. And we drop off and return as fast as possible, assuming no other complications for us or calls for assistance from behind. Or we can all three of us make pace together and assume that a Cincinnati we have would be able to detect any uh, incoming vessels matching that fight's description. Mm. Or any incoming vessels in general if we aren't expected to encounter anything out here. I see. And in that case, uh, Commander Efrix, you'd be staying here. Yes. Understood. Well, it's just a matter of getting Lord Starix on board with this. If I can't get him to agree to this, understand this entire plan falls apart. No worry about that. He Starks. wants us to head him. back to Starbase, correct? And wait for him to finish our mission? No, he wants the opposite. He wants to head back to Starbase and let us continue our mission? Because that doesn't sound like what you're saying. Our mission at present is to take to Calcutt. Or was... the diplomatic stuff, which uh, we've not heard head nor tail of. As his plan is, as he had suggested to me, was for Captain Kiddick to accompany him to Starbase 21 for the next week. Meanwhile, we would hunt down the Defiant class. And once Does the Defiant this class, Defiant once class have a vested interest in acquiring the cargo of the Salamander? Yes. The thing is, while the Defiant would be preoccupied with trying to track down the Salamander, we would be in the best position to make a preemptive strike. If this Defiant class is a rogue or stolen vessel, it may have access to Starfleet intelligence information, which could allow it to pinpoint the location of the Salamander if it is not in deep space. Returning to Space Dock might put the Salamander in more danger than that. And the Space Dock itself as well. Indeed. Not to mention, we still need to get to Calcutt ourselves. Captain Otherwise, nods. we know someone who will die. Captain nods and he says, Well, you do? under those circumstances, I think we need to, <laughs> I think we need the man himself to come here. I am unaware of a patient who needs to be transported to Calcutt. So am I. Right. No, I think Myth would have been informed of that at the no the pandemic. No, fuck I've heard a word holder of the Faro thing. Alright. Kiddick's like the only one the the put on the uh, here at this point that doesn't know. You need to transport something to Cockett except for except for the crystals. Uh, it's really, really complicated. 
in the same manner. Uh, Martyr's bones aren't classified, are they? I don't think your bones are classified. The, the, no, they're part they're of their. They're, they're, they're a uh, matter of Starfleet medical record. Cause... Okay, good. <laughs> That's meaning they're being crystal. Uh, in a similar manner to how my bone structure has been uh, changed to Calcut, <coughs> is similar ish to that, but not entirely the same. It's not my profession to try and describe it at all. Please try. I just did try. Fair enough. And the eyes moved to efforts. Did I just hear something? I think that was me coughing. I don't know, I thought I heard, just heard some beeping. Uh, that's part of the ambient. Ah, okay. Um. Well, right now I feel like we're just talking ourselves in circles. Well... Then let's get to the task at hand. You need to go to Cockett. I need to go to Cockett with my cargo. We also need to yes. stop this defiant class. Well, fudge. Nothing has been mentioned of that need to be happening simultaneously. No. In in order for our uh, in order for our journey to Cockett to go safely. That Defiant class needs to be taken out of play. Taking a Defiant class out of play is not exactly an easy feat, Captain. Even for this ship. Yeah, I know. I know it's not. And I, I don't know if the specifics, I don't know the specifications on that pad were different to a normal Defiant or not. I'm going to assume they were. Well, Hend will know. No, oh, that's me uh, saying, because Varder's looked at the fucking pad. He knows. I don't know. Uh, Varder can roll for me insight con difficulty of one. Insight con, uh, that's 11. Misa, no ships. Um, shipboard tactical systems is a focus? I'll give it to you, sure. Uh, heading back to the meeting room. Okay. Uh, I sh yeah, sure. A momentum. Why not? So I can't reroll this anyway. Hey, good. Wow. I rolled a four and still didn't get a crit success. Oof. Sending over some details. No. So, have we come to a decision while I was out of the room? Unfortunately, Oops. no. As things stand, we still haven't come to a consensus between Captain Kiddick's desires and uh, the suggestions of Lord Starix. And the problem is what? Making sure we don't get a follow to Kalka? I think it's less concerning that we'll be followed and that some, some of them will be pulled in. As things stand, we don't know <clears throat> what our best chance for safely bringing the Calcut to Calcut 2 is. I have a suggestion for that, actually. You do? I do. Uh, Miss Adler, would you take a seat, please? Certainly. Oh, uh, sorry about the table. <clears throat> Sonics have a tendency to uh, 
make me a little more sensitive than I'm used to. Uh -huh. So, Miss Adler, I would like to confirm, mm. when you are hiding your presence, you don't completely erase your presence, you make it fit in with background noise, correct? Um, in a sense, if I'm disappeared, everyone is looking where I'm not. So I'm just out of sight, and I can sense where everyone's gaze is. It takes me a bit to move around in crowded areas, but um, in essence, I'm the corner of the eye movement. Um, it's a task. It's a talent I learned over the years, but uh, the sonics make it easier to control where the eyeballs are going, or sensors in some cases for cybernetic eyes, but that's harder. Do you believe you could possibly show Mr. Bada the basics of that technique? Um, I could show him the basics, but to do it with the ease that I do, um, I would have to spend quite a bit of time training him. Uh, my ability, the sonic talent, the sonic trick is a, it's a tool uh, much like a phaser or a tricorder if i you still need the, the experience and know-how to utilize it in unusual ways what if you something had a, you've done and something i haven't is the short of it what if you had a supply of kalka crystals to draw around kiddick's gonna stare at daggers at pend he doesn't care you're suggesting that we use sentient calcate crystals. I would let me finish where this is going first, Captain, before you cast judgment. Uh, well, let me think. Um, the only one I'm f technique I'm familiar with, which I no I no longer need, and I don't really believe Varder does, um, was the use of red black crystals. Um, now those could augment the power to uh, overcome his, um lack of experience in that area but that does entail um, something that I'm only familiar with red black crystals doing blue crystals like the ones I believe are on the salamander um, I don't know how they would how to convince them to do that I don't normally get to talk to them and they generally don't like me for she looks around the room for uh, reasons that are obvious to most everyone here and the captain just crosses his arms so I mean further bones don't like her yeah. We do have experience with calming crystals and talking to them, allowing us to, say, pass by them or to calm them. If we incorporated that with your ability to mask ourselves, and we could use their ability, their willingness to get home, remove the Kismet's ISS, so we go dark. Oh, hiding a whole ship. Um, I can't. <laughs> I can't hide something that doesn't have a sonic presence. I can hide people. I can Wait. hide. I can make the ship seem empty. And if we remove the oh, ISS, so we're not broadcasting. Wait, 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 wait. The captain says. It, it, it can be done. It, it has been done. <clears throat> the, the the USS Hatfield did it. She shrugs. So my it's not a method I'm familiar with. The suggestion is, Captain, is if we can get the Colcut to agree to aid our two sidekicks, quote-unquote, and remove our broadcasting signals, we could, in theory, run dark to where we need to go. But what I'm saying is that we I can't hide... Uh, the energy output of the uh, of the ship. You don't have to. Um, but I don't follow. As long as you're broadcasting just enough so that no life signs can be read, we can take a alternate course. And if the ship's not broadcasting, they don't know where the ship is or the life signs. Thank you. Anyone presently on our trail would be able to follow us still. Via the energy signature of your warp drive, you would have to turn that off somehow and transport yourself in an alternate way. 
whether that be through uh, space bending technology or wormhole. It's a trick I've had to pull off a few times, and it's expensive in to pull that off. It's usually part of the reason why my people built impulse craft as opposed to warp craft, as well as partially we couldn't really build many warp craft in the circumstances. It made it harder for the Cardassians to track. So unless we want to get to Calcutt at Impulse, which I'm not that young to make that journey. None of us are. Except for maybe the command. This might be. Well, that too. Well, I suppose if you could find some nebula or other stellar body to hide the ship in for a little while, um, we could be. You could disable your warp drive, move an impulse to a near to that cloud, wait a little while, come out at some random interval or space of it, and at that point, go to warpus before they can catch up to you. It's now, how I've evaded you guys. Now, on the other side of that discussion, however. We come back around to Lord Starix. She there are, there are some things that he has made. Uh, there are some points that he has made in regards to this whole thing that I want to take his word on. And while I understand that some compromise is going to be made, I don't want to completely disregard all of the information he's provided. I'm aware that, Pend, you are quite familiar with the Defiant class that, um, <clears throat> that we're going to be worrying with, but Starix worked with me in good faith to provide us with the further information that uh, Varder has now. No, he has not. Hmm? Those specifications, as Pend can check, could be for any Defiant in the fleet. Or any Defiant currently in service with Starfleet. Yeah, that... It's basically... It's, it's baseline specifications. They're too general. It's the kind of... Well, we don't know for that specific ship, so let's just tell you the broadly what you can expect from how things normally are and our experience with Defiance has proved that ordinary is anything but for most of them well and he turns to Pend are we really that surprised given what you've told me about this ship I'm surprised that any information about it has been able to get out much less the fact that it exists no, I'm not surprised that information's got out. But generally, they wouldn't just give out a generalized report of it. They'd have little traits, such as like the Kismet has its scanners or little things that's unique to it. Hmm. I mean, it also another way. Additionally, I need to make sure that this is also understood. <sighs> Balancing discussion with Starix is of paramount importance here. It's entirely possible that depending on the way things go with the cow kit in this situation, we could be staring at a piece that will change the face of the century. Uh, how so, Captain? I'm talking a piece, a lasting piece, between the Federation, the Klingon Empire, and the Romulans. Related to this defiant and our mission to Calcut to at present? Yes. I'm not seeing the jump in logic to those two points. 
has to I know to do the with... Kettlingons have tried to weaponize Calcut, and I'm sure the Romulans have thought the same. Given the <clears throat> given what we know about our um uh given what we know about my former XO and he looks to pend Myth Varder and Ephrix. Um it's not entirely out of the question that the Romulans could be involved in this game. Well, I know for a fact that the Tal Shah and the Klingon intelligence are involved. Uh, what is the equivalent rank of this commission? This uh, the the Lord uh, Dupiki has. There a commissioner. Uh, or high commissioner is kind of I would put it at just above captain uh, almost not quite fleet captain but they're in that weird nebulous region where they're not part of the Starfleet chain of command they're kind of given a very specific uh, well commission they have a very specific thing they're supposed to do and they can make ships move around under that commission but for no other reason so if the TNMM was suddenly told by the way there's Borg you need the help that kind of falls outside his commission, so the ship has to attend. But um, unless, for some reason, his commission has been determined is like has a special, no, no, ignore that. But at that point, you usually send an admiral if you're real if you're if you're that worried about it. Commissioner's mm -hmm. just enough intention to get the job done without drawing an admiral out to do it. I was just thinking, we can't just say you're don't outrank us, so we can just do what we do until we're given orders by someone else. We can't no, actually do that. He has very specific orders to see to it that this piece happens. And part of those orders revolves around the Calcut. let's just say being safe. And according to the best intelligence he can gather, Sending them back home right now would be a beacon pointing out Calcut 2's location. Uh, Captain, could I just have a quick word with you for a moment, in private? Very well. Feel free to discuss among yourselves, the captain says, and he stands up and he leaves. And we'll, we can have this conversation in the text. So everyone else can talk. Whew. So all the missions around here like this, or? No, this is recent. Oh. And anything but straightforward. How's your head, Ms. Apple? Um, it's aching from stress, but um, I'll be fine. I was able to center myself in the refresher. I I know how to deal with it. So far, anyway. Um, I'm actually unaware how does one gather a calcate, but they're just laying on the ground on the planet or what? Um, well, you can't just ask them to take them with you. That's really the trick. Just be nice when you go up, and I gathered as many as I could and told them I was taking them on a tour. Um, I wasn't lying at the time, so sonically I was, uh, clean. I just happened to admit where I was taking <clears throat> So, Although that one bold step to Calcut has unfolded a little more than I was intending, farther than any ambition I had at the time. Kirik mm. looks at Adler. If they oh, wow. trust no, no, us, potentially tell them not to go with anyone else once we get there. Blue cow cat are very trusting. You would, um, they, it, all it takes is a soft word and clearing one's mind of malice. 
which most species can do. Um, or if you have an Android, most Androids don't have a sonic presence, so they tend not to exude anything. Uh, no offense meant, you just don't have a sonic... She kind of Then she stops halfway through, and then, what? Does Myth actually still have a sonic presence? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Myth right. Tilts her. She, she um, has one of those. Okay, <laughs> so I'm not sure how one... I will deal with that later. That I have many questions for you. Um... So As do I. I <laughs> Welcome um, to the Welcome so to the friend out. The red you need to convince some of the cowcat to turn red. Not red and black, because that's an artificial inducement. But they do naturally shift to red if much how a farmer picks up the blade to defend the homestead. Yeah, if that she looks around. I just realized that pro I don't know if that translated. Did that uh. Did that idiom carry over, or did I just speak nonsense for a second? It, I mean, close enough to me, because, yeah. We have farmers. Vardar was a farmer. <laughs> oh. like, that was, like, exactly what he did. Um, but essentially, essentially, that, where you could... If you can convince some of them that some of them need to take up arms to defend the rest. The problem is, one, when a blue cow cat takes up the red, they stay that way. Um, except for the calming mechanisms that I believe Dr. Efrix has developed. Uh, they naturally can't switch on their own right now. They don't really culturally know how. Um, so if you wanted someone to be defensive or suspicious, you need to convince them to take up the red, which if you've calmed, if these are all calmed, she looks at you, Captain Kiddick. I don't know how many of these were calmed or they were blue to begin with, but um, if they have been calmed, I don't know if they would be very likely to take up arms again. I don't think so. No. Hmm. They... I'd rather... They didn't end up as... Debris. Believe it or not, the same... They have. They are the saviors of humanity, as far as I'm concerned. Now, I can't relate to humanity, but I can relate to the values that set up by Starfleet. That is, they are a non-warp-capable culture that needs to be oh, restored. No. They, they, they are very warp-capable. Well, then. In the then. sense that they can transmit themselves psychically across space. They don't have warp, per se, but... Culturally, they just don't like leaving their planet. Yes. Which they is... have faster than light travel. Dude, I'm yeah. just waiting for Gwendolyn to respond. Lord Stark, where did you come oh, from? Sorry, I had, to, I had to look away at something for a second. Uh, but uh, I understand what you mean, Captain Kiddick, though. I understand the idea of Prime Directive. Uh, unfortunately, Starfleet long ago breached that particular uh, Rubicon have to remember not speaking to humans um they breached that barrier um and uh, they right now people who are very well they believe they're very good at diplomacy um are trying to put the uh trying to bring make get them to join but that can't happen while their people are being trafficked like cattle well, it's my job to make sure that they stop being trafficked like cattle, even though trafficking them like cattle and buying them back from people who are willing to buy or sell is part of my job. As a thought, if there are passengers as sentient creatures, we could ask them their opinion on if they want to take the risk of going there now. Of course. As something that just occurred to me. Yes. We need to talk to Starks. But if you... Um, the cockpit are on your vessel. Well, Lieutenant, if you would like to go talk to them, <coughs> you could bring Dr. Efrix over there and do so as well. You have my permission. Just report to my XO and... Yeah. It'd be something to speak with Grenon about, but it might be one... Course of action. 
Let them, as their own people, decide their own fate. Yes, it's important for people to get to decide. I learned that when growing up. But, as I said, Grenon and I will be occupied with Starks. If you want to take the time and talk to the Crystals, please, you are always welcome. I would advise the two of you that I don't go along with you on that particular journey. I don't think that would be very productive. No, I'm no, also I... considering that. <laughs> Miss Adler, I would... No offense, or some offense, actually. <laughs> I would prefer that you didn't step on my vessel. She <laughs> shrugs and goes, I I would have the same opinion. I don't blame you for that. Also, you know, I've got the kind of feeling in my bones about you. That you also know what my bones are at present. Yes, it's very strange. And that didn't happen to you? No. Um... Like our good Lieutenant Myth here, I have many questions about, and my organization has a lot of questions about your condition, but unfortunately that is... There's a lot of things in motion at the moment, so we don't have that luxury. Indeed. <laughs> also, mm. a quick side note, Miss Adler. Mm -hmm. I'd like you to uh, do an exercise with me. How many humans are in this room? One. Correct. Next time you speak about human morals, read the room. Uh, I believe most species within the Federation can just broadly apply morals to them, human or not. It's part of what we are. I'll put it to you this way, Captain Kiddick. Um, if your people had a method to uplift themselves, evolve themselves in a way that thought impossible. And they were told all their lives by every species in the galaxy that it is impossible for you to do a thing. And then you find a way to do that thing. Would that not be something that you would try to pursue as best as you can? Now, I will admit that I am to put it politely, an outlier in my organization. I have, uh, to put it in Starfleet terms, I have broken our prime directive multiple times to achieve our ends, which has not gained me a lot of favor back home. But I've gotten results where they have failed. So if I seem particularly uh, zealous in my efforts, understand that I am continuing a legacy of over a century if not longer so I meant no offense or to speak as if humanity was better that is not an opinion that despite what some in Starfleet would believe that is not an opinion that my organization shares we are not Terra Prime uh, it does kind of say that on your papers Miss Adler Mm. I grew up on Orion. Anyone on the street thinks that they're better than you. And according to them, they're right. I have been working against this all my life. Now I'm in Starfleet, and I know that that's not the... That's not how things works. Nobody's better than anyone. Just that potentially what they have learned how to do slightly mm. better than most people. I am not a very good captain. But I'm a very good captain in that I trust my crew and that they trust me. You see? She nods. If only more captains in Starfleet had that humility. Well, if 
I uh, happen to get stuck here for a week, then I uh, <laughs> might even teach Grenon how to do these things. He's a good listener. I think he'd. Uh, I think you'd like him. So I've heard. <sighs> Apparently, he sees good as well. She wanders over to a replicator and uh, kind of rolls her shoulders a bit, a little tense, and gets herself something to drink. I feel like I should defend the captain, but I. <laughs> and yeah, I was, gonna say, I was gonna say at that moment, like as the captain says that depend, he walks back into the conference room. <laughs> and as a question, GM, mm -hmm. uh, if someone is aboard a ship as a civilian in the guise of a guest or some such, are they under obligations to follow a transfer order, or is it their call? Um, if it's in the interest of their safety and security, then that's your prerogative as the commanders of the ship. But if it's just simply um, detaining them in some fashion, you need just cause. But if you're like, we're going to a planet that's about to blow up, we need you to leave. It's like, well, we don't want to. Uh, too bad. Our ship. Get off. <laughs> okay. But you, but you are expected to make sure that as Federation, uh, that they're taken care of and stuff like that. Uh, but if you like giving them the option. Yeah. A civilian that you don't like, you can't just kick off if they have a just reason to be aboard. It's like, I don't like you. Well, they're allowed to be here. <laughs> it's more me saying we don't strictly need to transfer Adler as long as she accepts the risks that are being stated exist. Well, uh, I was going to say, in the context well, you put in, yes. Yes, yeah, so what I was going to say is, as things stand, Adler, I think we want you to stay here aboard the Kismet. I think that's a decision that uh, everyone around this table can generally agree on. Well, she's certainly not coming on the salamander that's, that's established. And it sounds like putting you on the Tianan Min would be a... He just he he fishes for the right word and says mistake. Well, to clarify, I I have an old grudge with the ship, but I have since sensed that they are uh, not the same people that committed the crimes under Admiral Leighton. I see. So you think you can go over there and handle yourself then? At this point, yes. And he turns to Penn and he says, would, um, uh, would that be a good idea? Well, I have no objections to her meeting with Starrex. I do believe she would be best suited to remain here. If he wished to come over here for the meeting, I would much prefer that. And you accept those risks? I would actually recommend um, that myself and Commander Pend go, and he can make sure that we get back safely. We've worked together uh, not that long ago. Uh, if this turns sideways, um, we should be able to dig our way back out of it. I don't I don't know this Star X very well, but from what I can read from him from here, I think he's okay. But funny enough, I don't know about the rest of his crew. And I don't know about bringing him here will make him feel any safer. I see. Um, so in that case... Point of fact, hmm? um, I believe that this would be the best choice for me overall simply to go, because to go there yeah simply because it officially she looks like captain uh Kiddick, uh officially and this is probably aware to uh, i don't know if everyone's fully aware of this but i'm supposed to be in a jail cell right now um 
Well, sorry, oh, I'm supposed to be extradited to the Klingons, and then oh, problem details, complex. details, Adler. Well, if I'm with a certain commissioner of Federation, I think I can extend my uh, stay in the Federation for a lot longer. I see. Well then, in that case, uh, Commander Pend, um, Adler, I suppose it would be best for you to go over to the Tianan Men. <coughs> Now, as for the salamander, I think our best bet is for, <clears throat> I think our best bet would be to transfer the cow kit here. That is a good idea. I have a um, task to uh, Dr. Efrix and uh, Lieutenant Varder to explain to the crystals that they are being, being moved for their safety. Uh, I suggest that they do this while we talk to uh, Starks, you and I. Agreed. And then the Calcutless Salamander and the Tiana and Min will continue on. The question is this. And this is what we will discuss with Starix. Who goes where? Well, we've already discussed. We have, and especially if we have the Calcut on board, that we need to go to Calcut too. We have a patient that needs to go to Calcut too. Agreed. And Varder, you will stay. But. If we have the Calcut on board and we go, that could be playing into this trap that Starx is worried about. Exactly. The problem is, and he looks around the table and says, we have to make a choice. Agreed. Um, uh, one, hold that thought for a moment find the bloody thing. There's a sound it's trying to make. Uh, aha. We need to get you some, uh, what do you call it when you set a key to some, a, a mouse with a bunch of, like, micros. Yeah, Same macros. Thing. Macros. Yeah. <laughs> Not micros, Opposite. macros. Opposite. We don't need to make this more difficult. <laughs> Bridge to Captain Grennan. Yes? Uh, we are being held by the Tianan Min. Understood. I'll be right there, and the captain's gonna head back out onto the bridge and he said, you'd all hold on for a moment. I'll call for any of you if I need you. Cut okay. over to the bridge. And a lot of these people aren't here. Uh, he's there. Where gas is always there. He never leaves his post. Unlike some. Okay. Captain's going to sit down on in his chair and say, on screen. And he's a, he comes on screen. Boop. On the GM layer. That helps. There we go. That's my favorite. Captain Grennan. Yes. I've just been wondering if you're ready to begin. <sighs> Things have become slightly more complicated. Trying to confirm your plans with the captain of the Salamander has been difficult. You might remind him that he has the least of amount of authority in this matter. Mm -mm. If you'd come over to, uh, if you would be amenable to it, uh, the captain and I would like to have one more discussion with you before we continue. We think we might have a plan. Is it different from the plan that I suggested? Yes. I can't stand by that. I have very specific instructions. We're on a timetable. Instructions? The admirals I told you about, the three that I know, 
I can't deviate or other things that are in motion begin to fall apart. In essence, I and a lot of people have crossed the Rubicon. But I've been honest with you, so I will tell you that in crossing the Rubicon, I demanded that it be made clear to me that this was a velvet revolution. If you don't agree with me, then I'm going to leave and hunt down that defiant myself. But you will be able to follow your conscience. I'm not going to endanger Starfleet lives. Well, except for those on those defiant, but I don't think they're considered Starfleet anymore. But if you're going to cross the river with me, you need to do it the way I ask. I see. And he sighs and he says, I'll have a decision within 10 minutes. You know, I really want to go back to Romulus when we were just trying to commit treason. That was a lot simpler. <laughs> Captain lets out a slight laugh and he says, Ten minutes. And he motions to the person to cut the comms. He's immediately going to go back into the conference room because, oh boy, he just gave himself a timetable. And as he walks in, he's grumbling, he says, ah, damn ultimatum. Tell me Be about it. Those. <sighs> Lord Starks has given us more or less an ultimatum. Mm -hmm. We either go along with his plan exactly as he outlined it to us, or he's going to go after that defiant class himself. Uh, Wait, isn't the TNM in an Akira class? Yes. I think that's the best strategy. You mean a more heavily armed ship than ours? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The problem is, if everything mm -hmm. that uh, Lord Starix is true, uh, if we force his hand and make him go after the Defiant on his own, that will be playing right into their hands. If that's playing right into their hands, that means they're confident they're taking down an Akira class. Exactly. Well, which just... is up guns to us. All the more reason I should probably go over there and help them then, in that case. Since I'll actually be able to sense their... Defiance can still cloak. We didn't get... You guys didn't get rid of that. They can still cloak. The virtues of Starfleet made manifest, mm -hmm. but... <laughs> did you mention that we had an alternative to his plan? I did. Just slightly altered. Yep. Same number of ships going the same places. Ish. He wouldn't hear it. Well, then I'll make him hear it. And uh, Kiddick's gonna stand up violently. Oh, the captain uh, just lets out a sigh, and he's gonna let the captain leave. You're coming with me, Grenon. I'm not talking to him alone. He's your friend, after all. Fine. Fine. And the captain gets up. Oh, that's it. Films. Does anyone know the game Musical Chairs? It just suddenly just came to mind. I can't say that. Oh. <laughs> I've heard of the game Musical Idiots, but does that count? I will fight you. 
Captain, oh, no, you think yeah. Captain Brennan is a musical idiot. <laughs> this all sounds yeah, distinctly kidding. like being forced to choose a side. So back onto the bridge, where the bridge staff is noticing uh, the conference room doors opening and closing off for the right. past uh, 24 hours. <laughs> <clears throat> Captain, uh, uh, open a ch uh, channel to the Tiana and Min. Uh, channel open. And he motions t for <laughs> uh, the captain to step forward. Lord Starix, this is Captain Kiddick of the Salamander. I hear that you uh, have shot down a plan that you haven't even heard of yet. This seems foolish. It's unfortunate, but the plan that I laid out to him is the one that needs to happen if our entire operation is to succeed. We are but one bar in a concert. If we alter, we will stand out like a sore thumb and we will be destroyed. Spare me the idioms. I don't care for them. Captain Speak to Brennan? me plainly. And I... tell me, what is the deal? What is the idea that needs to happen here? I need you to follow me to a secure location, and I need Grinnin to hunt the Defiant. Once a ship that is he doesn't powerful have to enough to fight himself. your ship. He does not Current. have to destroy it himself, he just has to hunt it. I can destroy it, but I have to take care in hiding the crystals you have first. The crystals are more important than the Defiant. The Defiant is a loose end. The crystals are, are the game. Well, they know that the crystals are aboard the Salamander, correct? And they know that the crystals are going to cock it to, or following you rather, if your plan goes as it should, correct? And the idea is that the Kismet is to hunt this Defiant so that they don't hunt us, correct? Yes, the... We do believe that they know where the crystals are and the other statements are variations of true. And what hinders us from moving the crystals from the salamander onto the kismet, which has the capacity to store them and care for them and is faster than any defiant that I know of? And because... the salamander still goes with the tinnaman, eh, tinnaman, eh, human words. It goes with your ship to a secure location, leading them off the trail. Because I have fought much more powerful ships than a defiant in a Miranda and it took having the backup of several galaxies to survive that encounter well you have one I would not Kira, trust so. I would not trust in a thousand years your ship to search for the defiant which means that I is need not kismet. the idea sir and let me finish you are not that listening means, to me. that means I need the kismet to be the one searching not you and I need the crystals to go where I'm going. That means whoever's carrying the crystals has to go with me. And I can't let the Kismet do it because the Kismet's our only shot at tracking them with her sensors. You don't have the sensors, the speed, or the weapons to have a chance against the Defiant, which means the Kismet has to go and I'm not sending the crystals to a ship after the Defiant. You are not listening to me, sir. As someone who reads minds and feelings, 
for a by default essentially you are blind to what I'm presenting is Captain Grinnan moved off the bridge yeah he walked off the bridge he went to his ready room I need you to need speak. to listen to me. I need to speak with right. Captain Grinnan. The idea is that the crystals move to the Kismet and the Kismet takes them where they need to go while the Defiant hunts us. The Salamander and the Akira class. You've made your decision. I want to hear Grinnan's. Fine. So, uh, Captain Grady, you get chimed from the bridge that you're hold on. being... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What do you mean, hold on? The crew doesn't wait for your order. <laughs> no, 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 not you. I'm out of character. <laughs> I have a... Well, if this comes to... Comes down to social... A social combat, which I want it to become so that I can get this done. And I have the perfect tools for it. I'm just saying that please turn this into social combat soon. Thanks. Um, in that event, um, Star X, it depends on whether you're going to engage. Because it seems that Captain Kirik is going to continue arguing with you and either you have to engage or you have to just shut them off. The equivalent of someone shooting at you and you can either stay and fight or you can just leave. Uh, I'll repeat that I want to talk to Captain Grannon and if that doesn't happen, then I will end the call. Uh, in that event, um, Kiddick, you have one role to try to do something uh, before he cuts the call because it seems he's he's trying to there's a specific thing he's going for if you can get uh, one uh, what amounts to an injury in then uh, you might buy more time to talk more but this guy seems very adamant on uh, talking to a certain person but if you, your character's trying to get him to talk to you <laughs> it's like no no I'm trying to get listen to me dang it <laughs> uh, in that event it is going to be opposed uh, presence command. Uh, Persuasion. Use... Say again? Persuasion. As a focus. Uh, I'll give you persuasion, yeah. Uh, can you... Oh, I already used that, and it's once permission. Ooh. Yeah. Uh... I'm looking up a talent. Oh, I have to look up the talent list again. I think I know what it does, but I'm going to make sure I know what it does. I have bargain that it should I should it'll, it'll probably apply though, so I'm not worried about that. Yeah, okay, I know what it does. Okay. I have bargain that I wish to use. Mm -hmm. Which will let you roll one of one if this is a extended task, essentially. Uh I wouldn't call this an extended task. Because it's kind of a it's a oh well, actually let me think about that now that I say that. Social con it's not a one-off role, so yeah, it would effectively be extended in that sense. So I'd be willing to give that. Mm -hmm. uh, whoops, I'm being messaged. And I'd like to use uh, a determination. That is uh, a value. Uh, which value are you activating? Let's compromise. Okay. Um... Or body language says it all, but I think it, let's compromise is better. Let's compromise is better, yeah. Uh, 
I'd also like to uh, buy dice. Okay, so you're uh, surprisingly, at the moment, you're both buying from Momentum. Um, there's only six there. If you guys buy more than what's there, then it turns into giving me threat. Mm -hmm. uh, that's fine. All right, so... Um, how many dice are you buying, Kiddick? I'd like to be able to roll four dice, please. Okay, so that's... Uh, uh, you did determination, so that's five? two and five, yep. So the total amount that is being spent is ten between the two of you. So six plus four more to me. This is a weird way to get threat, but I won't say no to it. It's a very weird roll. Neat. I'm not complaining. It's more of a huh. I can't. I don't. I can't recall this roll uh, happening before. This is neat. Uh, so yeah, it's a roll off to see who uh, gets the hit in, as it were. And basically, both sides spent determination, and it's a bloody tie. Um. Hmm. When negotiating an offer with someone during social conflict, you may re-roll a d20 on your next persuade task to convince, yeah. convince them. So you it's could a try to... risky strategy, but it checks out. Yeah, you could re-roll one of your dice, and hopefully it rolls a two. No. Hmm. I'll succeed at cost if that's available. You would, wouldn't you? Um, this is why I wanted Grennan on the fucking bridge so that I could get some fucking help. I think we both want that. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so let's let's do this. Grennan, get out here. Hold on a second. Well, at the moment, this role has to be resolved. Um, he he left the bridge, so that kind of that's mm. the battlefield at the moment. Um, I'm trying to think. I have a con officer that could help me. <laughs> uh, not your ship, though. I know. It. I. I, that, I like that idea. It's you're just not on the. You're just not on your ship. Um, it's a ship. It's a ship. That's true. Um, Could I direct Starrex and just give him an automatic crit? I will fight you. I will come <laughs> to wherever yeah. you are. Um, you argue for you argue with him a bit, and Starrex, you know, repeats, and then he there's a brief moment where he kind of he engages with you for a little bit, um, and then eventually. Um, he he kind of makes the he looks off screen and, and makes a cut motion across his throat and then the call's cut. Ooh. The, so hmm. the the energy playing sun that that all the psychics feel just anger, <laughs> anger, anger. I mean, yeah, that is the complication he took. He really ticked off Kiddick. He could have kept talking to him not to tick him off, but that's the I, choice he I, made. I'm not sure what I will do. I will stand there, possibly take the captain's seat, just fuming for a bit. Like I need a seat. I'm gonna sit down for a second. God damn! <laughs> wow. Is it more comfortable than the Miranda class seat? Annoyingly, yes, because it has diplomatic suites, so everything's more comfortable. On this I have side. diplomatic suites on my ship. Oh, never mind. They're just as comfortable then. Haha. <laughs> Because they would, because uh, they would have updated your ship with pleasure sheets. But are they? But do they have rich Corinthian men? Well, yes. only the best. It's made from targi skin. Uh, is that what? Is that what? Uh... 
And I'll note, Captain Kiddick, that none of the crew, I don't know, it's like, because you're a captain, it's like, yeah, no, he, he can take that, he can sit down there oh, if he no. wants. We're not going to yell at him. Oh, no. You you want to give the captain a mental breakdown? That's how you give the captain a mental breakdown. Are you saying I should be calling for a fitness medicine role? Or... Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, okay, uh, fitness medicine role difficulty, I mean, sorry, to be Listen. fair. This is the exact time that <laughs> it would not be convenient for that to happen. Fitness medicine roll difficulty of two. <gasps> Don't die, please. <laughs> Ooh. Hang on. I'm hanging on. Renan has <laughs> a heart attack. By a thread here. I was going to say, well, my only hope is uh, I, I could, um, could spend a determination... But there aren't really any uh, values that apply to this. Oh. You could argue for mission parameters on the idea of like some general order, maybe. I could, but I'm still probably not going to get it. You could ask. Honestly, I think it's much more... I, I think it is much more... Uh, what's the word? Narratively uh, fitting for the captain to just shut down here. Uh, so that um, mechanically, as just the pressure of all of this has just he is shut down. Because uh... everybody is. Everybody is demanding conflicting things. Like, every, like, because right now what's going on is everybody is demanding conflicting things and nobody is willing to budge. We call that a Tellarite standoff. And, <laughs> and no matter what he picks, somebody is going to walk away so you say that like, the Tellarite is the only one who's fucking helping him. Because, <laughs> <laughs> well, and additionally, because he, he, not only is it a choice where he, he will, no matter what he chooses, someone's going to get pissed. It's a 50-50 shot that he picks wrong. Anyway. Um, at that moment, um, as you're kind of, uh, as uh, Adler... Uh, looks over at you, kind of looks a little puzzled for a second, and kind of looks behind her. And... Uh, Dr. Efrix, I believe the captain is in need of your assistance. Oh. He seems to be going through some measure of mental distress that I can feel from here. Also, it appears that Captain Kiddick is very angry, but he seems to be in control of himself. He's just... Uh, let's just say he's upset. But Captain Grennan is more than just a little upset. He needs your help. I mean, I would, but I don't think any of you would like me to do that. Excuse me, everyone. Um, I'll accompany you. I need to see what state the captain's in before we proceed. <sighs> okay, so you guys are going to go there. Just give me a second to check something. Uh, I would have to disagree with you, Kiddick. You have made contact. You're just being, uh, I just don't wish to talk to you. That's for when you approach a ship that's dead in space and you hail it and then it doesn't respond. And it's like, um, that's bad news. That usually means everyone over there is dead for one reason or another. Or that would be the cap the captured. when we hailed that disabled Romulan, uh, the Derdicks, and they didn't respond. I know that it applies to that situation specifically, but in this case, I'm using it for comedic effect. Oh. <laughs> Lol. Because it can't get through to Starks. Because it, Starks equiv it, it equivocates to it, I suppose, yeah. Yes. It's like, are you really invoking? I thought for a second you were invoking that on the bridge. I was like, huh? Wait, no, hold no, no, on. No, what no. order is that? <laughs> Varder's only issue right now is that it's a guy who was convicted and is using a very, very, very outdated order to get his position. Um, Which, uh, that happened sorry. on Bajor. Sorry, I will 
I should clarify. Uh, Commander Pan and Lieutenant Commander Efrix, you step onto the bridge. You know, Captain Kiddick is kind of having a seat and looks very, very happy in that chair. Um, I assume you carry on to the ready room. Uh, well, first of all, where's Captain Granham? He's in his office. Doctor? Right. The door is currently locked. I yeah. will o I will open the door. Medical, yeah, or medical override, either one. Um, either presence command in Penn's case, or presence, uh, yeah, presence, presence command or presence medicine if it's Efrix. Uh, one is assisting the other. You're basically ordering the computer to, with an override to force it to open. Uh, I've got a fourteen. What have you got? I also have a fourteen. I can bold command to open. Have you got a hurry roll? Okay. I'll assist. Because I don't think I have a focus for that. Uh, composure or oh, intelligence okay. option? I will have to say no to both in this case. You are officially open the door in, in, in that capacity. Then I will spend my determination. Okay. Uh, to what value? Either when shit goes wrong, figure it out, or... Fair enough. Yeah. So, three successes. Yep. So, it generates at least one momentum. Weren't you spending for bold, also? No, I didn't need to. I just spent my determination instead. Because he does have a focus, is the problem. Mm -hmm. Me assisting you, possibly probably in complications. I mean, if you want, I can just leave it as myself doing it because we have passed. Uh, oops, I almost said that to the wrong person. You, you start to, I start to like mutter about what the override code is, and you already have it open. Uh, <laughs> Quick question. When hmm. when you say the founding of the Federation, do you mean that thing that Starks told me about? No, like the very beginning. Like, think like Archer. Oh. Uh, at that point, that's when Pend and Efrix step into the room. <clears throat> oh, 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 that hurts. That hurts my everything. Well, aren't you, don't you two feel welcome. Um... Yeah, no, you, you walk in and just, <laughs> the captain's just sitting at, like, sitting at his desk, looking out the window, just this vacant, far-off look in his eyes. Captain? I was informed you were in distress, sir. And he just sort of... I, you know, I want to say he sort of just shrinks in on himself, puts his hand over his eyes, sort of just scrunches down, like he'd rather be anywhere else in the universe than here. Doctor, do you believe the captain is capable at this present second? I know what he's asking. Yes, I do too. Captain? No matter what I choose, I don't know. I just don't know, goddammit. Captain, if you can't get it together, you know what's going to happen. I have to. The question is, would you prefer me to take the decision out of your hand? But that would be the easy way, wouldn't it? Is that what you want? Am 
much as, as much as I wish it weren't my decision, it is. decision I've been saddled with and I have to make it in oops I'm about to make a choice that's going to either lead us towards the path to victory or to complete ruin I'm just gonna walk over and get him back on his feet well you already know where I stand captain no I I, I know I know where you stand, but there's <clears throat> just don't know. Captain. I trust you, and your first instinct was to trust Starix. But no matter what I choose, somebody's going to... <clears throat> somebody's going to disobey. <clears throat> somebody's going to... Take... Take it out of my hands. Welcome to the darkness. It's not so fun, is it? That's why I said I never wanted to get involved in this. Because I knew it would come down to a decision like this. But it needs to be made. Yes, it does. And he looks up at Pend and he says, Pend, you are aware that... And he lets out a sigh and says, if we go through with this, we're going to be killing your mother. That that's what um, the um, uh, what's it? The um, his mother is Azalon, right? Yeah. Sorry, I wasn't following the line of logic. That's my bad. Okay, n now you get it. I think so. Yeah. There's only one place to that line leads penned. Pen just squeezes his arm a little bit. If I have to walk down that line, I will. It's not something that you have to worry about yourself. Well then looks around and he looks at Pend and he says well Pend I think you know what I wish to do we'll go and do it then And he stands up. And he slowly starts making his way towards the door. Uh, Penn's just going to stay where he was. And to leave the ready room. 
Kiddick stands as Captain Grennan steps onto the bridge. Uh, Captain on the bridge. Could you go with him? I'm fine. You know, it's okay. Well, considering I'm already dead, I can't ha have to lose some family as well. She Captain. Her shoulder and goes to keep an eye on Greg. Captain Kiddick? Yes, Captain Greta. I need you to just please, please trust that I know what I'm doing here. I get the distinct sense that I will uh, have to, no matter what. Otherwise, I will not have an escort. I wish there was another way. Believe me, Captain, so do I. I wish that we didn't have to deal with these foolish disputes. That we could just explore space and do diplomacy as as our training intended for. <laughs> I know. I know. But, well... And he lets out a small smile and he says... That all ended that day that I set foot on a crystal world about a year ago. And From that day forward, I walked a different path. Well, we all... Uh, we all have you to thank for it. Otherwise, we wouldn't have found these amazing individuals. There's a war coming. You know that. I can feel it in my bones. No, it's not like Barter. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a war coming, and I've been given the distinct impression that I have to choose one way or the other. And depending on which way I choose... We walk the path to paradise or to hell, and it's true what they say, it's paved with good intentions, but one way or the other, I have to roll the dice. Put my money... <laughs> put my money where I think the chips will lie. I'm sorry. And he turns to the uh, screen and says, Help them. Kiddick turns and puts their back to, uh, to the view screen and puts a hand on their very, very prominent forehead. Channel open. Captain Grannon. Let's begin. You know, Grennan, when... Right after they arrested me, my first officer came to me, he half said, half implied the most insane thing. He, he implied that if I had just followed orders, it would all work out well it didn't work out and I'm glad to see that you're willing to follow your conscience when it comes up I'll wait for confirmation that you are ready to depart and um, I'll begin preparations to lead the salamander mm -hmm. and we await the transfer of Efrix, and uh, I think you called her Adler. Correct. 
we wouldn't mind also having Commander Pin for coordination, but um, that's up to you. He said, I, seems I, like uh, a competent officer. I think that can be done. Ooh, I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> I'll give... You, you probably are a little unfamiliar with the gesture, but it'll be like a Beta Z form of bow. And the screen will go blank. Kirikis. You think crying softly into their hand? <clears throat> Says one of the officers on the. Uh, orders, Captain. Hold for now. Prepare uh, for uh, the departure of the EXO and Chief Medical Officer. Aye, sir. And actually, one of the Starfleet right. officers kind of comes over to Kiddick and kind of checks on him. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Efrix. Checks on them, I should say. Duh. I feel like Hendon and Efrix might bite Fight you on sending both of you. Yeah, I'll head back onto the bridge. Okay. Captain, I don't think it's a good idea for you to send both of us away. That's essentially deconstructing the chain of command, sir. What do you say, Pend? Where do you need me? You'll be able to hold up here, right? When it comes down to it? I can do what's necessary. I just need you to tell me where you need me. Well... I know, I know Starrick said that it would be helpful to have you for a coordination, but I think you'd be better served here. After all, uh, <laughs> I need someone to hold me together, don't I? That gets worried looks from the crew. <laughs> uh. I'm kidding. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it just looks yeah. serious. So uh. the officers look over at Penn and the doctor, and they just look at their stations. Leave it to you, too. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. Nope, this is all perfectly in character right now. And I oh, may yeah. have, I have may, may have missed this, but, um, sir, so what's the plan with our patient? The patient? Oh. We should Did keep we stay holding here? him for now. I... We need you to... We do need you, however, to join the cow kid. need you to do what you do best. Help heal. Very well. Um, I'd like a moment to talk to my staff. Of course. Someone. And we, we need someone to be able to check on that. Besides me. There's a couple of specialists we already trusted. Of course. That's going to run them ragged, though. Make whatever preparations you need to make. Permission to be excused, Captain. When you have a chance, start putting together what information you can that will help us track down our target. 
But other than that, you're excused. You'll just walk out. Efrix does the same. She gives the captain kind of a um, wane little smile, and then, yeah. One of the science staff that were nearby kind of are attending to a Captain Kira, like, uh, do you need assistance, Captain? No, I'm fine. I um, have a problem with crying during import important decisions. It uh, has given me a lot of hard uh, times with the Klingons. Uh, of course, Captain. Um, do you need anything? Nods. And then returns to their and then returns to their station. I hope you know what you're doing, Gwen. It is a hard choice. And Kiddick will motion to or move towards the turbo turbo lift. Take care. I'll see you when this is over. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And the turbo lift closes. And with that, the episode is over. Oh!